All right. Hey, go, Jabari, the YouTube link is in the chat. Okay. It's in the stream. In the you stream. see it? I'm going to put it in the private chat so you can yeah, get put it. Put it in the private chat, please. All right. So you can get it. We live right now, letting the people see what's happening. Hold off for a minute. Let the people come in. Yeah, man. What's going on, Jabari? Huh. We did all this goddamn work. Huh. Wait for a little huh. while. Let the people come in, man. Yeah. Domo, Domo. All you got to do is, um, you know, anybody out there, I'll tell you, Domo. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, man, these niggas is crazy as hell. Are you able to go to the old page and pin the comment for the new one in there? No, I, I exited out. I cut it off. Okay, because I'm still in the old YouTube channel. 99 people are waiting there. So. Put it in there. Put the link in there. I did, but I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask you to pin it. Oh, just paste it again. Paste it again. I will. My moderators should be able to pin it. They in there. The moderators can pin it. I don't know who's in. Oh, Max Bird. Maybe Max, Max Bird. Tell Max Bird come on over here. We live over here. Tell him to come on the side of the studios. I'm going to. Yo, how do I end that show over there, Jabari? That joint's still going on. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, if you go into your YouTube channel, you'll see uh -huh. other channels that you have going. You can end it that way. Okay. I wouldn't even worry about it right now because there are 99 people there, so. Yeah, they should be coming over here right now. We need to just keep redirecting them, yeah. Yeah. I just asked Max Bird to, Max Bird to pin it, but I don't know if he sees it. He said he's redirecting. Mm-hmm. Now there's 84, so less people are. Um, yeah, let's give them some time to get over here. That's right. <clears throat> Can you imagine? No. But <laughs> then again, yes. <laughs> that is the perfect response. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you could have a better response. No, but then again, yes, because crazy things happen sometimes. So mm -hmm. we just didn't expect a crazy thing to happen right now, but that is precisely what happened. So I'm going to send another email to everyone um, that I was emailing, telling them, giving them the information and telling them to come to the public link. I'll do that while we're on. I'll do that while we're getting ready. Um, just insanity, insanity. Um, I'm in the I'm in my chat, but I don't see where I can end my other show at. No, not in the chat. I think you have to go in the back of. Yeah, your, I'm in the I'm in the back of the whole YouTube channel of the yeah. whole. I'm on sign of the studios in the back. I don't know why you. I don't know. I don't know. I would think you'd be able to see it from there. Like, you know how it's, you should be able to see all of the of the, the things that you have. Yeah. Can't you just go into the room and end it? Because you're, I don't know. Um, let me see something. Looks like he put the new live in too, which is good. Uh, Max Bird did that. So we'll be um, going in a minute.
important update. Important debate update. Christianity stolen from Kemet. How many people in there now, Jabari? In the old chat, in the other one. Let's see. I am uh, sixty-six in the first one, and the one I created, only three. So, sixty-six. So, yeah. The, um, I think we should start. We should just. I'm don't. trying to end it. Oh, oh, all right. I think this could be the one that say end it. Cause it's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me see. It's so called Jabari end. versus Garfield. Don't don't end the wrong thing. I know. I'm looking. <laughs> and in fact, uh, the the last few, the last three um, letters in the URL are I O four. I don't know if that helps. Tell me if it ended. I just ended it. No. Yeah, you gotta probably give it time. If you refresh it, it might end. Go ahead and refresh it. I'm doing that now. Nope. I hope you ended the right one. No, I did because we would we wouldn't be here right now. No, we on we're on. Oh, because it says live. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but it's still going. The other one. Uh, yeah, the numbers are going down. It's fifty six people now. I think it ended. It ended. But, it might have, but you know what? It might have ended. Ex exit out and then try to go back in. See what I happens. Just, I just refreshed and it's still there. But you know what? I wouldn't worry about it. You know why? why? Because. With the stream offline, I wouldn't see a stream end. You know how when you're on and the stream ends, it, it ends? But mm -hmm. there was no stream to end. <clears throat> the page sitting here. Okay. So I wouldn't worry about that. All right. I wouldn't worry about that. All right. So um, would you like to begin? Let's get it in. We got 384 people in the building. That's not bad. Um, obviously, we were expecting many more. Um, yeah, because they all waiting. You know that they, they waiting on them the links. Sure, 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 sure. Um, I I just have to say um, that some people are saying they need a new link sent to their email, and they're making the comments. Are you able to hear us live? Please let us know, because people are still saying I need a new link. But if you're saying a new link and we're sitting here, this is where we are. So you don't actually need a new link. You're in the room where you're supposed to be. Does that make sense? I hope that yeah. everyone understands what that means. We're we're live, um, and I'm hoping that you are able to um, to be part of this conversation. I'm hoping that it you're not confused, you're not in the wrong place, all of that. Um, so basically, um, I'll say a few things. I know that Sonetta will as well. Let me first start by saying that um, I really did prepare seriously for this debate. I have been teaching this information for over 30 years, studying it for over, let's say studying it for over 30 years, teaching it at least for the last 20 or 25 years. Um, and what I am saying that we are, uh, my argument is one that I thought needed, you needed to hear the entire um, breakdown of why I have taken the stand for that. 
And so that is what um, this debate was supposed to be, right? You were going to get everything, and it was going to stand up against all those things that our brother Garfield was going to put forward. I was really looking forward to the debate. You can imagine, I know all of you have been waiting for nearly three years, so have I. And so this has been, this has been a long time. We had some technical difficulties earlier caused by the fact that our um, Eventbrite page, the Eventbrite, Sonetta's Eventbrite page was set up to start the debate a week ago. And so when that didn't happen, it ended. You, Some of you already know part of that issue, right? So today we were trying to fix that issue, right? We did fix that issue. Unfortunately, as we reached out to Garfield, Garfield didn't call us. As we reached out to Garfield, he then said that he could no longer do the um, the debate. We said that we would have gone live at around four. He said he could no longer do it because there was something that he was going to be doing, something important. Um, Ankh was um, on the phone with him. He did not want to tell us what that was. Um, and you can imagine that we were both very disappointed. And Garfield was very upset. Uh, uh, Sonetta was very upset as well. Because he said, well, if you had a, a, a hard stop, why didn't you even mention that before? Why didn't you mention before that you knew you were going to have to leave at, let's say, 430? Why, did, why didn't you say that? You're muted, Sonetta even know i called him up and i said yo you ready we getting ready to do this we getting ready to go live he tells me yo i ain't gonna be able to do it so i'm like what the what what you mean you ain't gonna do jabari been working since what time in the morning jabari oh my goodness getting the links to everybody i'm telling golf i'm like yo bro we got to do it i said the worst thing to come is we could at least try to do it tomorrow but don't say you can't do this shit he said he can't do it man the other thing is, um, I didn't even want to switch to tomorrow, folks. I know that you were expecting this debate three years ago. Now, that was completely out of our control. Yes. Right? The world shut down, right? Yeah, because of the COVID. Yeah, but then you were expecting this debate last week. And you canceled last week. We canceled. And I, I am not questioning the death of a relative. That's not where I'm going. I get that he had a death in the family. And that continuing on that day would have been difficult for him. I understand that. But trying to accommodate him meant that um, it created some real issues with the technologies, right? Eventbrite said your event is over. It, it started last week. It ended last week. So this morning when we were aware of it, it became a real issue. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a sense that there might have been a problem earlier um, because folks who were trying to purchase last during this last week were having challenges, right? So all of that happened. I have been sitting here for hours cutting and pasting emails and trying to, to assist as best I could so this event could still occur. Now, keep in mind, Sonetta didn't call me for help. I called Sonetta for, to help because I knew that something was going on, mm -hmm. right? And you've been working ever since. I want you to understand how that is because I'm expecting to do something with Sonetta and Garfield. So if I haven't heard from you, I'm going to reach out and say, guess what? I haven't heard from you. Is everything okay? Garfield didn't do that. Garfield did not do that. And I cannot see into his mind and I can't see into his heart. But it does feel a little strange to me. He's running. They running, man. It feels strange to me because he's fucking running. To me, he's running, man. I would have thought that if he had these challenges, first of all, why didn't he tell us yesterday that there was right, a right, that he had to do something at fourth? Why didn't he say that? Because let's keep in mind when you do a public debate, three hours is kind of the the least amount of time you're going to spend. So you're telling me that you knew that you had a hard stop at around three hours and you didn't say anything. Mm. Why not? Even when it got into two hours, you don't call me and tell me nothing. You only tell me when I call you and say, yo, brother, we getting ready. Come in the chat. Then you say, oh, I ain't going to be able to do it. I got to be out of here. Like, what? But I'm like, yo, God, why you ain't tell me that? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you my entire presentation. My entire presentation. Now, I know that some of you who are sort of on my side 
who actually uh, believe that there may be some truth to this might be happy with that, right? Some of you who agreed with Garfield might be a little bit less than happy, but I want you to understand something. If I didn't think this information was strong, if I didn't think it could stand scrutiny, I would not be presenting it all now. Somebody <laughs> says, Saad, did you give Garfield any money? No. Why would I give him money? No. Neither of us have gotten money. And I want to say this, Jabari. I think Garfield is still butt hurt or Kotex hurt because of what happened with Shaka. He got mad at me because I allowed Shaka on my program. I still remember that because Garfield haven't called me since. So I know he was still mad and butt hurt because I allowed Shaka on my program. Now, I didn't know Shaka was going to mention Garfield or bring up Garfield's name. I don't know any of that. What I spoke to him, about? and Garfield called in live and started accusing me of why did I allow Shaka to come on my damn program and say that about him. Like, come on, brother. Many times you allow people on your program inside of your, your chat saying all kind of crazy stuff about me. All kind of crazy stuff about me. I don't even know anything about that part. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have, and no. so ever since then, we we cut off communication. He cut off communication with me. I have not spoken to Garfield until yesterday till he clicked my link and came in and said something. But he right. got out of there. I was actually, and I called you yesterday and said, have you heard from Garfield? Yeah, and I what I kept telling you. You said no. I think and Garfield is running. We need to get Reggie Monkey ass on this platform. I want to get Reggie in here because Reggie was talking shit. And let me also say the reason why I thought that was strange is because obviously we moved the debate. We accommodated him and said, let's do it next week. Mm -hmm. So I would have assumed that he would have reached out to me and said, I have a challenge. That's, I mean, Garfield and I having intellectual debate, he's not my enemy. I know things got heated at one point. I really believe that we were past that. So I, I, I'm I, not sure why he would not just reach out and say, listen, this is going on. He didn't have to tell me exactly what it was because when we were on the phone just recently and he said he wasn't going to continue, he didn't even tell us what it was about. By the way, it seemed very clear that he did tell um, Ankh what it was. It seemed very clear that, he, that Ankh knew what the issue was. Yeah. And I'm telling him, I said, well, at least tell me. Because I need to tell the people what the hell is going on. He don't want to tell me what's going on. And so I'm what the hell? So now I got to say what I'm saying now. And and uh, and Sonetta, let me say to you, Reggie. Maybe with a certain opponent, you might. Yo, be. hit the link, man. Because, yo, you got to come in, man. Hit the damn link. Don't run now. This your boy. Hit the link. Maybe. Yeah, it's it's my boy. Hit the and link, I'm Reggie. Hit the my, link. I'm Come on in. Hit the link. I'm in my sister's house. Tony yeah, now you in your sister's house. Wasn't you going to watch the debate too? No, this is my what? family. So New you wasn't family. prepared? Oh, hold up. You wasn't prepared to watch the debate today? Yes, I was. So I come on a, and hit the link, me, brother. I, I, excuse, wait, excuse me. I had an emergency. I'm Everybody got emergency. Oh, okay. I'm How you doing, doing sister? No, 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 don't, family. Don't, don't. Okay, so All right, sister. We ain't mad at you. Like that, we ain't okay? mad at you, sis. All right. No problem, bro. I hope everything's okay, Reggie. All right. They said, do, they saying, um, do we get refund? Yes. If you want your refund back, you can get your refund. I'm not going to take it from you. I'm going to tell you something. So that I put a lot of work into this. The work I put in would not have even um, represented, would not have even been effectively response. Uh, whatever payment I was going to receive, right, I been much more work than the payment I was going to receive. Exactly. Yes, I, I agree. Still, I would still like to be paid mm -hmm. because I am here. You're going to get my presentation. But you I'm, know how our people are, Jabari, man. Yeah, so I know that some people may want a refund. And I know that Sonetta may have to handle that, but I'm still yeah. going to be paid, Sonetta. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a reality. <laughs> I put a lot of work into this. And I agree. I agree with you, yeah. Jabari. Yeah. So what I am going to do is I am going to, you're going to get my whole presentation. Hey, hey, hold up. Hold up, Jabari. Tell the people what I said, though, earlier. Keep it a buck. With what? 
And, and I agree with you. I was telling Jabari and I told Garfield. I called Garfield. I said, yo, why don't we just go on my channel and let's just give it to the people. Whoever didn't pay, so what? Let's just give it to them. But Jabari was right too. He said that's going to make the people who did pay a little feel in some kind of way. Yeah. But I didn't care. I wanted to give it to the people early. Right. You know? And that's what I said to them. I told them both that. Let's just go give it to them then. Right. But the way, I know? Looked at it, the way I looked at it is this. The reality is you've all been waiting for this for three years. Then you were waiting for it. It was finally scheduled. Do you know, listen, Jabari travels a lot. I'm all over the country and in other parts of the world. I will see people and they will say, will you ever do that Garfield debate? Oh, so I, I was in the airport in Ghana going through um, customs in the airport. Now, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in a foreign country and going through customs, you are focused. You're not having idle conversation. You need to, because customs officers need to see that you are um, focused and, and responding to them. A brother rolled up on me and said, Brother Jabari, I didn't know you were here. Do you think you're ever going to do that debate? And he wanted to have a conversation while I'm standing there online with my passport. I said, brother, I can't talk to you about this now. What am I trying to say? This was important. Can I say something real quick? Dr. LaRoche wanted to say something, son. Hey, doctor. Gentlemen, um, I just wanted to share my experience with you. I purchased a ticket to support. I actually had my wife, who's a Christian, my sister-in-law is in town from Jamaica, who's Christian, my nephew, uh, all lined up to watch this at the current time. Uh, See, so we could have a discussion about some of the issues to be talked about. Um, it looked really unprofessional because they were waiting and I had to let them go after about an hour. I was like, okay, you know what? Just forget about it. I'll probably oh, man. This and that. And, um, you know, the, what happened with Garfield is very unprofessional. Yeah. So there's a certain level of professionalism. You know, uh, Sanada, you've come a long way with your TV show. Uh, Jabari, you've come a long way with the Shrine of my art and what you've been doing around the world. And there's a certain level of professionalism that was, you know, horrifically not met with this particular event. And uh, Garfield's a bright guy, but, you know, when you have an event and you're going to have something in public, there's a certain level of professionalism. You know, I'm on the phone with Garfield and Jabari will tell you, I'm like practically pleading with him. Come on, Jabbar. Come on, Garfield. This is going to look bad, bro. I said, it's going to look bad for business. Yeah. You got to do it. I said, I, hold up. Hold up. Hold up, brother. I said, brother, I will let you come on. Being that you got to go early, I said, I will let you come on and you can do your whole presentation and then you can get ahead. He still didn't want to do that. He's like, nah, bro. I'm not going to do my whole presentation. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm like, yo, you got, we got to get the people some shit, brother. So, so basically, he still we'll, didn't want to do it. Well, my suggestion is this at this point, you know, Garfield has basically forfeited the debate. So he's completely lost the debate. My suggestion would be to proceed to have Jabari go through his presentation. And I'm not sure how you guys do the money division, but whatever Garfield was supposed to get should go to Jabari and that will end this and you close it out. And I'll tell you what we can do though, Jabari. You can keep your presentation or you want to give it to the people now and we could just go right for past the Bennett. Gonna, Hold wanna... up, listen, listen to me, listen to me. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. We can go right to past the Bennett. Right. For the people who already paid tickets, we could still have that email and, and send that out. Because we already sent the email blast out. Right. We can do that. Yeah. You know, I, we can do it like that. Or I, we can just set up something else. I'm prepared. But I want to give the people something for the money. We got I, to do that. I, I feel very strongly that people paid and they and they set up aside their time on New Year's Eve yes. to watch this. I am willing to give my entire presentation. My entire presentation. And for those of you who would like to be able to listen, to, to confront me, let's say that you really believe that I'm incorrect, I'm willing to sit here and, and, and answer questions, deal with your concerns, listen to your side of the argument. I'm willing to do that as well. Because I feel very strongly that this is not how this should be done. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would agree with that uh, fully. And to just move forward, get the content out to respect the work you've put in, uh, give people a chance, you know, to ask questions if they want to. And then you yeah. move out and you close it out. And that will be this episode. 
And yeah. Then, you know, however, you decide. Nah, to believe it or not, the people don't want that. That shit is weak to them. They want to see this damn debate. That's what they want. They not say. I understand what you're saying, LaRoche. You cool with that? But the people, the people coming in, they want to see the debate, man. I think that there are people in this chat, as I'm reading the comments, that would like for me to do the entire presentation and do that. And I'm willing to do that now. Right? And the people wanted to see a debate. I mean, you had an event one time schedule that was delayed. It was accommodated for a second time schedule that was delayed. I mean, you know, the debate's not going to happen, you know, and you're, I know you're hoping that the debate's going to happen, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. But it's not going to happen. It's yeah. a no show. It's a loss. And right. When you're moving in professional circles, you know, time is money. I yeah. mean, you know, I have a lot of love for Jabari. I have a lot of love for you. I would never. I would just walk away from something like this. Yeah, okay? I know. I know. And I've already yeah, I told you, Barbie, we're not doing it again with him. If he come and he want to set up, we we done with Garfield. We done. And so, Jabari, ain't no debate in Garfield. None. That's done right there. Yeah, but ain't but, no going. Ain't no coming back weeks no. later. Yo, I'm re no. Fuck that. We done with that shit. Mm -hmm. And I would tell all my people. Don't purchase another goddamn ticket from no debates Garfield put up. Simple as that. Don't purchase no tickets, man. Anything that Garfield put up, don't purchase nothing. Because at the end of the day, Jabari, they not going to look at you. They not going to look at Jabar, um at Garfield. They looking at me, bro. I know, I know. Just like with that whole shit that happened with Pharaoh and Seti, they looking at me. And yeah, I become the goddamn scammer. It, not no Garfield, not nobody else. It's all me. It all falls on me. And that's why I was pleading with this nigga. That, Yo, come on, bro. You got to do it, man. Come on, man. So, so that's my I mean, I'm willing anything that anybody asks for, in return, you ain't even got to worry about it. That shit is going to be resent to you. But like Jabari said, I definitely got to pay Jabari. I got to give him something. He ain't canceled. Here go, yeah. Reggie. Let's see what Reggie got to say, man. Okay. Good evening. Show your face, Reggie. Don't hide. There you go. There you go. <laughs> He's not hiding. Yeah, no, I'm disappointed because, I, you know, I wanted to see some butt kicking. I, I'm, I'm disappointed. We, we, I'm, I'm, I'm as disappointed and more disappointed than everybody else, right? Because now, unfortunately, the people got to live with this, uh, this, uh, this uh, false premise that Egypt, uh, uh, that Christianity stole from Egypt. So. I'm 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 upset about this. Uh, Garfield was my my my. How can I say the best person that I thought that could handle this situation? So now our people got to live with this false premise. So that's 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 the first part of what I got to say, right? I'm sorry about the people uh, who counted on this debate. Um, I, what what can I say? I I can never see this uh, not happening. But um, Sarnetta, can you hear me? I can, can you hear you. I'm listening, man. Yeah. I in the future, you. in the future, um, when you do a debate for both people, they they need to sign a contractual agreement with you. I about agree. The I debate. agree. I agree, so, bro. The first debate, unfortunately, um, Jabari had to cancel it or decided to cancel it. No, right? no, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. It was COVID that canceled it, brother. Yeah. It was what? It was COVID. No, not the first debate. The last, the the one, uh, the uh, no, the one. Remember, I told you it wasn't set up with tickets yet, so that didn't count because we didn't have the date. That didn't count. Okay, you're no right about that. You're right. You're right. You didn't set up the electronics to uh to get the right. tickets. Right. There was no date. There was no date. There was I no date. Nothing. So I, I accept that. I accept that. That I accept, right? But anytime, anytime that there's uh, uh and, and you know this happened with uh 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 such and such uh suiting such and such and uh and and and, and Pharaoh without a dynasty, right? Pharaoh without a dynasty with that debate, right? Uh, there has to be a contract. But what what can I uh? You know what can I? What so can, at I least can you say that y'all lost the debate by default? You you lost you and your buddies. Y'all lost by default. Yes, I I can say that I can say that uh, the default the default 
uh, loss always goes to the, the people that don't show up. That's that's mandatory yeah. in anything. That's default, right? And so I'm All just right, upset. so we don't want to be too long because Jabari, I damn sure got to get somewhere too, just like you. I know Dr. Anika probably sitting there mad as hell because you supposed to be spending to time. Sister? Why is my sister upset? What did you say to my sister? No, they supposed to be going out just like me. You know, come on, man. It's nice. Like, come on. Jabari, so oh, I mean, yeah. if you want to start your presentation, I yeah. would say let's do it. And um, once you show your presentation, the debate with Garfield in the future is done. Um, we done with the debate with Garfield. Oh, he just okay. ran, he said that's it. I Simple am, as that. I, I am All prepared. that shit that he might come back on his channel and say. That's bullshit. It's excuses because all you had to do is tell me what the problem is, and we and I ain't had to guess and do this on my own. But wait, so but it's wait. garbage. It's bullshit to me. Don Netter, it's more than tell you what the problem is. It's yeah. tell you there's a problem. Yeah. How did? How are we gonna know that he had a hard stop? How are we gonna know that? He should. Well, have at this said point. But at this point, once the thing was going on, right, to the to, to day, it's very difficult to cancel a debate because the people, yeah. uh, how can I say, the people are affected. So, and it's the people, so many people want to see this debate. So, look, um, Sarnetta, make sure that you draft strong contracts, right, uh, in, the, in the future. And I, I'm, when I get home, I, I'll come on my computer. All right, hey, hey, Reggie, Reggie. Being that yes, you were so adamant about this debate and you was yeah. helping Garfield anyway, will you step into his spot right now and try to save face? How could I step into anybody's spot in the last minute and I don't really debate, but I will have some I will have some questions. Okay. That's that's, then, that's listen, all right. So I get ahead, sign, um, I get didn't sign no contract. I'm not getting no you know, I didn't sign no I'm step I'm I'm, I'm just uh, listen, I gotta I gotta eat this. You know, it's hard for me to eat this. All right, there well, will, there will definitely the be no Reggie, rescheduling. You were talking a lot, Reggie. You were How talking a what? lot, Reggie. Okay, who, who? Garfield was your boy. You were talking a lot, Reggie. Oh, you're not my friend anymore, doctor. Uh, oh. Yes, he's your friend, brother. Oh. I'm your friend, but I, I got to hold you to the truth. What do you hold? What truth are you holding me to? That <laughs> brother, Gar brother Garfield could not do the debate? No. What, what, what you, did I have to no, do with no, Reggie? You endorse... You endorsed his position. Yeah, I endorsed, I endorsed his position. But what does that got to do with me, doctor? Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, wait, hold, on. Hey, hold on, y'all. Brother, um, 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 you want to say something? Um, Are oh. you ready to throw in the towel as well? Yeah, I know you playing right now, yo. But well, you I'm know not you playing. Got, I'm dead ass serious. You know I'm you not got playing. That. You know you got a thousand people in there listening, and you can sway their opinion because we all have believing brains. The truth is, human element. You, you, you went out. You went out, Unc. You went out. Oh, oh can, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I said human parts, things moving, tragedies happen, but I'm fans of both of them, and, and I don't care. If y'all have it on Mars, I want to see it. I want to see it. And I'm well, that'll never happen, brother. That's done. Whatever, whatever, because you just been, you just mad. But Jabari Man, wants to see it. Now, Jabari, do not want, Jabari not trying to hit it. At this point, Jabari's saying. No, we're I'm showing a, the presentation now. So once Jabari no, shows the presentation. No, you're not, Jabari. No, you're not, Jabari. Yes, we no, are. We Jabari, ain't, we're not no. doing that no more. We're done. Stop. Jabari, I'm done. Stop. Jabari, Let me respond. Let me respond. Let me respond. I, I ain't finished yet, Jabari. Jabari, I'm not finished yet. Punk, it's a forfeit, huh? It's like it's like a great fight with heavyweights, right? You want to see it. So what I'm telling you is, yo, if you really think you can get with him for real, yo, then say, I want to see him in the ring. All that forfeit, we're not buying it. People going to run their mouth, all that shit. We're going to tear your shit apart. What you need to do is you need to catch him, bro. That's what you need to do. That's all you got to do. Trust me, Jabari. That's the easy way out for anybody. Nah, we not running down on Garfield. We ain't doing that shit. Um, it's nah, sound good. I we ain't, ain't doing none of that, brother. None of that. People spent their money. I'm going to be blamed for this shit for like a whole... You know how it go. Um, no, you know how this shit go. With Pharaoh and Seti, 
I was blamed for months behind this shit Please. of scamming the people, running off with the money, all this nah, bullshit. Nah, yeah, we're yeah. done with Garfield. No, I'm not done with him as my brother. Hold up, listen, no, let me say this. I'm not done with him as my brother, but as far as doing debates and all that shit, no, nah, I'm done with him on that. Yeah, I'm done yo, with him on that. But you're I'm doing sorry. it the wrong way. You make it seem like it's all And I'm telling stuff. everybody, if don't ever no, buy a fucking no. ticket from Garfield doing any goddamn debates. <laughs> Fuck that. So Can that's I, where I'm at with it, man. So hold on. So basically, basically, hey, you going to stand and co-sign that, though? Jabari, Jabari, Jabari. Hey, Jabari. No, I'm Yo, speaking for myself. Jabari ain't no, got nothing. Right, hold on, Jabari. Unk, Jabari. he's a no-show, Unk. He's a no-show. Nah, I don't want to hear nothing nobody else saying. No, get, 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 wait, hold on. Why is Dr. Why, why, why is the, the, the medical doctor on? Why the fuck why is he on? Wait, wait, wait. Why the fuck everybody got to talk? I'm asking Jabari a question. Let me respond. I heard your question. Let me respond. Can you hear me, Jabari? I heard your question. Let me respond. No, no, I have not finished my question. I'm asking you as a priest, Jabari. Brother, brother. Jabari, Jabari, as a priest, you know what time it is. Do um, not miss our netter because he's mad right now. You are asking the same question, and I do not have time for people to ask the same question several times. All right, man. I, I think you run it. I think you run it, Jabari, because you know you. all you know is really I, I am think you run it. I am not. You run it. I am, you run don't it. have to say as a priest. I'm always running. A priest. It's not and like you're running. Now you're running. On, and all of a sudden, now I'm going to respond as a priest. Now you're running. You Mr. running because you know what it is. I'm saying you scared. And so, I'm saying you scared. So, I'm saying you glad he That's not fair. I'm, I'm saying you glad he ain't show up. God feels a no show. Sonetta, Sonetta, I think that you need to, to I mean, listen. If All I, right, get to Bobby, get Have a conversation, let's have a conversation. We're not going to just go back and forth like this. You yeah, whatever. Yeah, that, see, that's the let shit you make you scared anyway, though. You still have not let me respond. You asked me a question like 10 minutes ago. Because you know what it is and you're scared. So this is come deal. on, come on, Unc. Let him talk, this brother. Is, go ahead. This is the deal. This is the deal. I really want to have, you know, Ankh, and you know Reggie, even though we're not on the same team, you know I want to do this debate. You know that. You could think anything you want about me, but there isn't anyone on the back of Geb that don't know that I want to do this debate. I want to fi finish this finally. But I want you to recognize that there's a point where you try to accommodate and accommodate and accommodate, and it's just not working. I want to debate with Garfield. Last week when he had to cancel due to a, a death in the family, I was really, I, I'm, who would who would be so heartless not to hear that? I heard that. I can't but tell. I, but I do know, I do know that even though we had to postpone it a week for good reasons, there's an effect for our audience. There's an effect for the people that are here. And so I am proceeding today because I don't want that effect to continue. And Sonetta, as much as I love the people that you've put on, honestly, we're going to do this presentation and we're going to move. So this is not a time necessarily for everyone to talk. They can talk after the presentation. Yeah. Now, um, I feel strongly enough about what I've put together that I'm going to do the presentation and if y'all are going to make 18 videos, which I know that you probably Yeah, will, and we don't care. I'm not going to look at any of them. 18 videos. And you know what else? The reality is I will respond to them. Yeah. Because as much as this has gotten oh. as this has gotten like personal, the reality is I wanted also for you to respond to my ideas. I want that. I just oh. hope that it was going to happen so we could sit down, have a conversation, put it all on the table, and evaluate the situation. Can I ask you one question, sir? I can't sir? do that now. I know. Can I, I just ask you one it. question, sir? I couldn't wait. Hold on. I couldn't All do right. it three weeks, three years ago. Couldn't do it a week ago. Can't do it today. How much All longer right. am I going to wait? You're right. So You're that's right. the reality. That's the reality. All that set is a virgin oh, stuff. Oh. When you do that, all when right, you all right, Reggie. I'm thank y'all. I'm gonna have to let y'all go so Jabari oh, can do his presentation. Yeah. You see that? You see? No, yeah, I'm gonna have to let y'all go. I love y'all. We got to let y'all go so um, Jabari can do his presentation. If you want to come back in and respond, that's good. But for right okay, now, cool. we got a show to do, man. And y'all can come back in. Brother Jabari hey, is on you, brother. Go ahead and get yeah, started. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I'm going to show my entire presentation. I want you to understand that um, if someone has a response, I'll respond. You know, right. um, it's not like this is 
one of those situations where the information that I'm sharing is going to be harmed by the light of day. I'm, I wasn't trying to trick him by not knowing a source on the debate. That was That's not what I was looking to do in order to win the debate. I'm trying to put forward the entire it, uh, bit of information. And I'm going to say to you, I am going to deal with Ost as a, as a virgin today. I'm going to. For those of you who are saying, I even heard Garfield say he'll never do it again. Even though just three weeks early, I had done the same presentation on Sonetta's channel. I'm going to tell you I'm going to deal with it. Today. Today. And if you don't believe what I have said, that's fine. That There are people who believe all kinds of ridiculous things. You might be one of them. And I'm going to say this about us as a virgin very quickly. I'm going to say this. And by the way, I even know, I, look, I glanced across and saw a comment um, uh, by one of the folks who I've had a lengthy conversation with in the chat room. What's his name? Amir uh, Eshrafa. Eshafra, Eshafra. I hope I'm not um, destroying your name, Amir. That's not my goal. Um, what I'm going to say to you is, I told you in the chat, if you believe that your argument can stand the test of time, come forward on San Netter and we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. I like seeing people in the chat have ideas, strong ideas, and think they have enough um, uh, research to be able to challenge some of the ideas. So if you do, get it. Just bring it forward. If you disagree with me, bring it forward. This is supposed to be a dialogue. It's not supposed to be us insulting each other. It's not supposed to be us um, uh, saying nasty things about each other's personal lives. None of that. So if you disagree with it, come forward with your argument. That's what I want. And with all of this, there's one thing that I have to thank Garfield for. Garfield made me even structure all of the information I've been teaching into a, let's say, hour and a half structured conversation that I hoped would sway people who disagree with me. So for that, he deserves credit. And so I want you to see it. If you disagree, fine. Tell me what you disagree on. Let's have a dialogue. That's it. So you're going to see my presentation today. Sonnet, I need for you to share it. It's called, Was Cis Christianity Stolen from Kremit? Brother Jar Garfield, Brother Jabari Osaze versus Brother Garfield Reed. And for those of you who disagree, I'm also hoping that what you'll do is you'll listen to the whole thing, okay? Listen to the whole debate. Because another thing that happens is people come in and out and they think that they have a winning argument and it's already been covered. It's not. We're not going to take um, three hours to cover this because you're going to hear one side of it. So listen to the whole thing and let's let's get it on. Let's continue. First of all, let me say to you, you saw two members of Team Garfield. You saw them. And you already knew that they were going to be biased. You knew that. You knew that. I give more credit to Reggie for at least saying, listen, by default, the person that didn't show up loses. At least he was, uh, he was able to say that. At least he was able to say that. But we know who the team is. Garfield had an entire team arrayed against me. I want you to know that he also let his team down. He let his team down. And you should know he's been talking about this topic and talking about me for years. We need to recognize that all of that is now over. So with all of Team Garfield, who is Team Jabari? Who's Team Jabari? Here goes Team Jabari. In many ways, what I am doing is I am going to be articulating the erudite arguments of ancestor scholars. That's who we're talking about. 
on the extreme right, you see Asa Hilliard, who made his transition several years ago when he was visiting Kemet. On the top, you see Dr. Yosef ben Yakinin, one of my direct teachers. And then on the right, you see Dr. John Henry Clark, who was also one of my teachers. This is my team. Let's hear briefly what they have to say on the matter. First, Dr. John Henry Clark. Listen to Dr. Clark. A whole lot of people think the Africans created a religion. Who ever charged this crime to the Africans? I'm using my word advisedly. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam have been turned into murder cults. Because once they emerge, they begin to be used to justify the murder of other people. Mr. Anderson said, if he's an infidel, he has no soul, and it's all right to murder him, it's all right to enslave him. Judaism said, if he's not of our faith, it's all right. Islam said, if he's not of our faith, we can put him to the sword. The Africans created an overall spirituality and a God of love. These foreigners who misunderstood African spirituality created God of business. So I want you to understand what Dr. Clark has said. Of course, some of you are saying you can't understand it. It's a really poor audio. It really is. Um, you have to recognize that Dr. Clark didn't live in the days of digital audio. This was on an audio tape. And what did he say? He said, don't be confused. Africans did not create a religion. That is what he said. He, he talked about how their misunderstanding of African traditions led them to be what he called a murder cult. Let's hear from Dr. Acer Hilliard. Osiris is the god uh, who was associated with Isis, the husband of Isis, uh, symbolically. Uh, you see Osiris here with the... Uh... Let me see if I can turn it up just a little bit. And let me know if you can hear this. Shepherd's crook and the flail. And he was then the supreme god who was married to Isis. So that becomes a, the god who was married to a virgin. And they have an offspring. And so we have the first holy family. And so that's an example of a, of a religious story that is similar to the Christian story, but it's 3,000 years older than the Christian story. And is there a resurrection element here also? Uh, Osiris was resurrected. He was crucified by his brother, cut up into 14 or 28 pieces, depending on the story. His evil brother said, jealous of him for several things, cut him up, and he was, again, uh, he was risen from the dead to rule over the dead. And that was the story. Yeah, this, is, this is this is the only story of the re resurrection. That, the Christian. Again, that goes back about three thousand years before Christ. Okay. We've now heard from Dr. Asa Hilliard. Let's hear what Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinin has to say on the matter. Now, in many ways, he is the the arch elder, the arch ancestor with this in this particular argument. He made it the most. He put together the sources the most. Take a listen to Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinin. Let me just ask you this. Let I me mean, just say this. People believe, unfortunately, most black people don't believe that the only religion black people have was Christianity. They do is the Islam. They forget that the first world religion was the worship of Qatar. T T A H, a real man. There was no Adam and Eve mentioned in place yet because there was no Judaism. And if there's no Judaism, there's no book of Genesis. But you went so far as to say that the uh, virgin birth and uh, all repetition and they could read with the works of the their myths. Their myths. All the religion is myths. Religion is based upon beliefs. There are people who have their lives. There are people who are dying to go into cemeteries. <laughs> 
I'm hoping that I know that you're going to complain a bit about the audio, but can, did were you able to understand at least? That's really what I'm asking. Were you able to understand it? Okay. Keep in mind that this is all. These are all things that um, our our um, ancestor scholars said, and you're going to hear more from them as this goes on. Take a look at this. What you are going to need to do today is you're going to need to do a bit of forensic history. We're going to look at all of the pieces of data and we're going to have to reconstruct. We're going to have to put together what occurred. We should not expect that the Christians who took this tradition knowingly will tell us exactly what they did. You're not going to see that. But I want you to understand that as we put these pieces together, you will understand what occurred and who was involved. So, Christianity stolen from the comedic tradition, an exercise in forensic history. I want you to understand that this argument I'm going to be making is going to be made in three parts. First, you're going to see some of the sections of what I have created called the Savior's Model. The Savior's Model demonstrates that the fundamental aspects of the Christian tradition are found in the comedic mythological narrative. You are going to see archetypes, you're going to see textual usage, and you're even going to see that some of the characters that are common in the Christian tradition were wholly taken from the comedic tradition. So you have to recognize that as you look at my saviors, by the way, I will not go through all of the seven sections of the, um, the savior's model today, as you can imagine, that would not be something I, I would do in a debate or here, but you're going to see at least three of those sections today. Next, you're going to see that these same early Christians actually uh, led a violent and brutal, and brutal obscurement of the comedic tradition. So you're going to see that these archetypes, these ideas were taken from Kemet, and then you're going to see those people destroy, or at least seek to destroy, the original. We're going to talk about the destruction today. And then finally, you're going to see the near confession of early Christians and others. Because many of these individuals, the leaders, the early Christian fathers, the theologians, they understood the origins. You're going to see these three sections in my discussion today. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a discussion around it. Let's continue. This is so you see the three sections of the argument that I'm going to be putting forward today. Once again, the Savior's model, the Christian destruction of the comedic tradition, and then early Christians literally implicating themselves. You're going to have to pay attention to all three of these sections in order to truly understand what occurred. First, there are four things that we need to keep in mind as we embrace our roles as ancient forensic history detectives. And as we do this, I want you to get that there are four things, four things that those detractors will continue to say. And I'm going to say to you, those four portions are absolutely, I think, some of the most ridiculous things that one can say. That's what we're going to see. And I want you to also recognize that these arguments, they were trying to seed the territory, seed the field, seed the battleground before our debate occurred. 
with these, I think, poorly framed and illogical arguments. The first one is, what is stealing? They attempted to say to you that because the title of the debate was, was Christianity stolen from Kemet, that the word stolen would have been there out, would have allowed them to win. In many ways, as you might have heard me say this, I actually believe that they were trying to tell you you did not know what stealing was. Well, this comes directly from Merriam Webster. What does steal mean? First, they tell you it's an intransitive verb. And look at the first portion of this definition. It says, to take the property of another wrongfully and especially as a habitual or regular practice. Let's be clear about that. To take the property of another wrongfully and especially as a habitual or re regular practice. You will see that that occurred today. You will see that that occurred. This is from dictionary.com. They say that stealing is to take the property of another or others without permission or right, especially secretly or by force. You are going to see that this was done in some instances secretly, but definitely by force. We're going to talk about some of that force today. And I really want you to pay attention for a moment uh, uh, to the second part of this. It says to appropriate ideas, credit, words, without right or acknowledgement, without right or acknowledgement. This is an important part of this discussion because clearly we are going to see that these early Christians stole, they appropriated and continued to appropriate ideas, credit and words without right or acknowledgement. One of the things I, I want to do as we uh, look at this in a forensic manner is I want you to just look at this dude. His name is Stephen Bilkis. And Stephen Bilkis is an attorney right here in New York City. He's a very, very popular, a very popular defense attorney. And so on his page, he explains some of the laws in New York, the state that I live in, the state that Garfield lives in, the state that Sonnetter lives in, the state that Reggie lives in, to give you a sense of what stealing means. Let's look a little bit further. He also says theft is stealing. Theft can be defined as the unlawful taking of property of another person or entity. In other words, theft is stealing. Theft is a broad term, and in New York, there are multiple criminal offenses that are related to theft. He includes larceny, robbery, and embezzlement. He also addresses a very interesting aspect of this concept of stealing. Because sometimes what you will hear Garfield and others say is they will say, well, you have to prove how they stole it. And how do we know that they stole it? Maybe they stole something that belonged from someone else and they got it from somewhere, someone else. These are poor arguments as well. Take a look at the definition of possession of stolen property. It's a crime to purchase or accept property that you know or should have known was stolen. While possession of stolen property is a crime or of theft, it is different from larceny. And he continues and he continues. Take a look at this. What if I didn't know the property was stolen? To be convicted of possession of stolen property, actual knowledge of it being stolen is not required. Did you hear what I just said? According to the laws of New York State, I think this is interesting. It says that conviction of stolen property, actual knowledge of it being stolen is not required. All that is necessary is that you should have known. And we're going to show you that those folks knew what they were doing. Take a look at how I am arguing that this information found its way into the Abrahamic traditions. We see the comedic tradition all the way on the left. And 
the Abrahamic spiritual traditions, in this instance, we're focusing on Christianity, took directly from the Kemetic tradition. But it was filtered through their own foreign social norms. So what you've seen that comes directly from Kemet is not exactly, is not exactly how it occurred in Kemet. Because they remixed it according to their worldview. In addition to that, they also got some of the Kemetic spiritual tradition filtered through the other mystery traditions in the Mediterranean region. And before it got from Kemet to those other traditions, it was filtered through their social norms. And then also, of course, the Abrahamic tradition, getting it from the mystery traditions, also had it filter again through their own social norms. I want to be really clear. I am not saying that Christianity is an exact copy of the Kemetic tradition. If I was arguing that, I would be a Christian today. But I want you to understand how this information, I want you to have a, a logical model so you understand how this information made its way into Christianity. Number two, what if we're actually talking about plagiarism? Is that stealing? By the way, this image of a Madonna and child from Cuba is fascinating to me. You can see an extremely dark, an extremely black Mary, and then what looks like a, a extremely light-skinned Jesus. There's a lot being said here. We had a lot that is being said here. So what, what about plagiarism? Is plagiarism stealing? Let's go back to Merriam-Webster again. They say plagiarism is to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, to use another's production without crediting the source. Let's be clear that plagiarizing is another word. It's a specific form of stealing. And that is what we're talking about here as well. Let's continue. The other thing that you're going to hear, this is the third thing you need to keep in mind as you look at this entire debate. The other thing that you're going to need to hear is you're also going to uh, hear Garfield and others say that what we're really seeing is syncretism. Syncretism, as Miriam was uh, describes it, is the combination of two um, different forms of beliefs or, fat or practices. The fusion of two or more originally different inflectional forms. So that you are going to see that in modern Vodun, in modern Vodun, you're actually going to see that some of that tradition pulls through, particularly the Roman Catholic tradition. You're going to see it in Santeria as well. In some ways, there are some synchronistic aspects of it. But I want you to ask a fundamental question. Because really what we're asking here is, if you're going to take something from someone, you would assume that you would acknowledge where the origin of that thing is. That in some ways is the difference between borrowing and stealing. Take a look at this. Some of you may recognize this statue or statues like it. What is this statue called usually? Who knows? Let's see you type it in the chat if you know what this is called. And for extra credit, I'd love for you to tell me where this exact statue is. Where is it? Why is this statue interesting? What is synchronistic about this statue? If you look closely, you'll notice in her crown, you are going to see the sun and cow horns. This European, Tom Hu looking um, character is actually supposed to be a version of Ast, a version of the deity called Oset, a version of the deity that the Greeks end up calling, ended up calling Isis. Notice the cow horns, the sun disc and the cow horns in the middle of her crown. But this is not quite Ast. Usually scholars call this. Isis Aphrodite. This is when the Greeks and the Romans merged these forms. This particular statue 
as I see one of the, the members of the Shrine of Ma'at mentioned, um, actually, Brother Sean and uh, Daniel wrote, some of you, oh, and, and, and Tisha, and go ahead. These are folks that I work with very um, often. They're, they're ringers in some ways. Understand that this is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And it actually is the last item that I discuss on my tour of the Metropolitan Museum. As you look at this, this is how those folks who came from outside of Africa began to utilize the images, the concepts, the spirituality of Africa itself. That's what you're seeing here. And in many ways, understand that even as they took this, they at least acknowledged that this was, in their words, ISIS. So while I take issue with the extremely European, extremely Tambu image of this lady, even though she has um, uh, plaited hair, as you can notice, they at least are saying that it came from Kemet. They didn't take it wholesale. This is syncretism. This is them blending two different things. That's what we're seeing. So, of course, we're talking about borrowing versus taking. When, and, and we have to ask, when does borrowing become stealing? Here's another site that addresses this, another legal site. And it says, from a legal perspective, in order to be guilty of stealing, you have to have the intent never to return the item to its rightful owner at the time you begin borrowing the item. If you were legitimately forgot to return a borrowed item to its rightful owner, then you lack specific intent to steal the item. You, what you are going to say to see today is you are going to clearly see that they took from the comedic tradition without citing where they took things from, some things verbatim. And instead of saying, this is part of the origin of our tradition, instead of giving respect to the creators of those ideas, they called them de demons and pagans. They destroyed their temples, murdered some of them, and even destroyed their text. That's what we actually see. We are not seeing syncretism. We are seeing a dastardly act of theft. That's what we're seeing. Take a look at this really quickly. You're seeing again the image of me standing in the temple of Philae and showing you the, the Christian vandalism that occurred there. We'll talk more about this later. But I want you to recognize that one of these things that you are looking at is you're actually going to understand that the, the standard for how things were stolen comes directly from the biblical text. Take a listen to Deuteronomy 12, verses 1 to 3. It says, there are the statues, there are statues and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers given to thee to possess it. All the days that ye live upon the earth, ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hewn down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. Let us be clear that it is the Christian tradition, in fact, the biblical narrative itself, which puts forward this type of violent and brutal destruction. Like the video, thumb up the video. That is what you are seeing here. That is what you are seeing here. The Bible demands the destruction of these things, demands destruction of these places, demands that you destroy altars and images and pillars. We cannot be talking about syncretism. We're not talking about that here. 
Let's continue. Let's continue. The fourth thing you have to understand is the Christian tradition does not have to be exactly the same as the, the comedic tradition. That is the point. If the Christian tradition was the same as earlier traditions, then we would actually be talking about the comedic tradition in its changes and alterations. But as you see theft, and then you see destruction, you cannot say that these things are the same. You're not going to see that these things are the same. But we, stood, we should still recognize the origin. Now, maybe I'm dating myself a bit here. But as you look at this, I want you to see the image of Star Wars and Spaceballs. For some of you who are 70s kids, 80s kids, you probably get this reference here. Star Wars was the original, right? Star Wars was the original. But clearly, as Mel Brooks put forward his parody of Star Wars, if you watched St Spaceballs, it was clear that Spaceballs was based on Star Wars. We can recognize the relationship. That's what we're talking about here. They don't have to be exactly the same for you to recognize the origin of some of these ideas, the origin of some of the texts, the origin of some of the characters. You are going to see that today. Clearly, as we unpeel this, as we follow the breadcrumbs, as we retrace the footprints, we will see what is the original and what is the copy. Let's continue. First of all, I, I, I want to really say something about this. And I would would have really liked, I would have really liked Garfield to be here for this because Garfield speaks a lot about this topic, but I want you to understand in order to win a debate that discusses two different positions, two different topics, what you have to do is you have to be able to understand both of them. And one of the things I think is interesting is we can look at the scholars that, that Garfield speaks to. This will help us understand how his ideas are being shaped. You might know if you follow his work on YouTube that he actually has his, as he calls it, 20 for 20. During Black History Month, by the way, he didn't just say February. He actually said Black History Month. During Black History Month, he pulls together scholars to talk about issues. So who are the scholars that Garfield is speaking to? Well, here are many of them. I'd actually say these are all of them that he's spoken to since nearly 2018. Take a look at the 12 biblical scholars that he's had on, some of them several times. Here are the 12 biblical scholars that he's spoken to. He's also spoken to four preachers, apologists, and theologians. and four scholars on the Black Hebrews or Jews. Three scholars who are atheists, Tim O'Neill, David Fitzgerald, Dr. Joshua Bowen. Two individual scholars who spoke to him about Assyria and Sumer, Cornelia Wunsch and Brother Chuck Morgan. And then, one scholar on Islam, one scholar on genetics, and one scholar on ancient Kemet. And Dr. David Falk would obviously say Egypt. How can you get a clear idea of this if these are the people that he speaks to? Clearly, this should help you understand that Garfield was never prepared for this debate. That, in fact, he has no knowledge of it. 
I remember speaking to him once and he was arguing with me about Dr. A, a comment that Dr. Clark made on a video. And he and Black Jesus Minister played that video over and over and over again. And the thing that I found so funny about it is I said, well, why don't you just go to his books? And both of them stared blankly at the screen. They had never read his books. That's the challenge. They have never read his books. If Garfield were here, I would have demanded for us to get an answer to this question. Have you read Dr. Ben? Have you read Dr. Clark? Or are all you're basing their arguments on things that you actually thought you heard in, in some of their lectures? Because I do believe that Garfield claimed that he went to some of their lectures at the Old Slave Theater in Brooklyn. And things that he heard on YouTube. I'm going to say this to Garfield and all others. That's not how this scholarship works. I even asked both him and Black Jesus Minister to even show us that they owned one of his books, one of their books. Show us any book by Dr. Ben, any book by Dr. Clark. Of course, neither of them were able to do that. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. Let's continue. Of course, there's a, a fundamental question you have to ask here. What happens if all you do is speak to, quote unquote, biblical historians and Christians? Can they be objective in understanding the origins and describing the origins of Christianity? In some ways, this was the question or series of questions that Brother Chris Harris was trying to ask. When we had our conversation with Carl, Dr. Carl the other day, this is the question he was asking. Now I know some of the apologists thought he was being rude. Certainly his questions were pointed, but rudeness was clearly not something that I would think you couldn't call what he was doing rude. They were pointed. And the point of his comments were, clearly you're a Christian, and you argue that Jesus did all of these miraculous things. In fact, that is why you're a Christian. But now as you sit here as a, as a quote unquote scholar, you're saying none of those things matter. And so then he read portions of the tradition that say, in order to be a Christian, you have to believe these things. So how in the world could you argue that you're making these arguments based on a, a purely historical basis, a purely architectural basis, a purely textual basis, when we know that you believe this because you are a believer by definition? That's what he was asking. And I'm going to tell you there are a bunch of people that would love for him, love for him to simply disappear. But that brother is asking some tough questions. And I actually, in my conversation with Carl, had asked a few questions that I thought were leading, but I didn't take them to the end. I was waiting to the end of our conversation to do some of that. And I was really hoping that someone else would come in. Chris did come in and ask that very, very diligent question. So I want to introduce you to Dr. Nicola, Nicholas Thomas Wright. He is a critically important biblical scholar for over 50 years. He was the Bishop of Dunham, in the UK for seven years. He's a research professor in the New Testament and early Christianity at St. Mary's College. He was there for many years until 2019. He's a senior research fellow at Wycliffe Hall in, at Oxford University. He's the author of over 70 books. And he's known for his Christian origins and the Question of God series. What does he say about looking at this argument? Listen to what he says very clearly. He says, I have taken it for granted that Jesus of Nazareth existed. Listen to what he said. I have taken for, for it for granted that Jesus of Nazareth existed. Some writers feel a need to justify this assumption at length against people who try from time to time to deny it. It would be easier, frankly, to believe that Tiberius Caesar, Jesus' contemporary, was a figure, a figment of the imagination than to believe that there was that there never was a person such as Jesus. I want you to understand that what he is saying is that he's taken it for granted. And that is not what we want 
anyone to do. What we want to do is we want to deal with the historicity, to deal with the data, so we're able to understand exactly what occurred. Now, I, let me just say, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because the title is, Why Did Dar Garfield Take This Debate? And Garfield did not take the debate. Obviously, after all of the gyrations and genuflections over the last few years, Garfield backed out. Right? But I want to say to you that in order to have this debate, you have to have knowledge of both traditions. You have to have knowledge of the beginnings of the institutions that created the Bible, not just the Bible itself. You have to have knowledge of the period when Westerners extinguish the comedic traditions and the comedic language in order to become the dominant religion. If you do not know this, if you're not familiar with this, you are not equipped to engage in the debate. And I would argue that Garfield was not equipped to engage in the debate. So, Let's discuss the Savior's model. These are the three aspects that we'll be dealing with today. My Savior's model, the Christian destruction of the comedic tradition, and early Christians and their veiled confessions. That is what we will discuss. That is what we will discuss. Let's begin with part one, the Savior's model. This is the model that is going to be the basis of my upcoming book. This is the model that um, I have put together because I am arguing that the major aspects of Christianity come from Kemet, nowhere else. The major aspects of the tradition come from ancient Kemet. And in fact, one of the things that people do sometimes is they look at something that is irrelevant in the Christian tradition, something that if it disappeared tomorrow, it would not affect believers, it would not affect the tradition, it would not affect the way that people worldwide who were not Christians understood Christianity. And they say, did this come from Kemet? My answer would be, maybe not. And ultimately, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. The major aspects of Christianity come from the ancient African Cushitic Kemetic tradition that came out of the Hopi or Nile Valley region. Let's talk about part one. So here are the aspects of the Savior's model. For those of you who are not familiar with the model that I'm constructing, you should know that it is a seven-part model that actually deals each of these letters are, it's an acronym. Each of these letters represent to uh, an important part of the Christian tradition. S stands for sacraments. We're going to see deities or a deity in the comedic tradition that was also connected to um, sacred food items. We're going to see that. We're also going to see an, in A that a comedic deity was killed, murdered, and ascended into heaven for the rest of us to be able to ascend into heaven. The resurrection narrative is best described under A. V, virgins, we're going to talk about the concept. Remember, these are concepts because I'm not arguing that us or even Mary are literal historical people. But that the people who believed in these concepts did believe that these two divine regal ladies were virgins. I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you that today. Then there's I, innocent. One of the things that you'll also notice is the deity, the, the, the God person, let me use that word so you know what I'm talking about. The deity who is defeated or destroyed is innocent. They are killed wrongfully. They are solid, good people who are murdered. We're going to see that this innocent deity who does good works in the community for all people is the one that's destroyed, the one that's murdered in both the comedic tradition and the Christian tradition. And you're going to see official titles. We know that we constantly see Jesus called the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I'm not going to even deal with this one today because you already saw Garfield fall on his face with this one. 
arguing that that didn't exist in the comedic tradition thousands of years earlier. Clearly it did, clearly it does. Then we see R, refugees. This deals with the, the, the sacred journey, the flight to Egypt that Joseph, Mary, and Jesus had to take in order to save him as a baby, to keep him until he could be an adult. That is, this is under R, refugees. You're going to see that a similar journey was taken by Ast and Heru. Then finally, the sisters. And this is where we deal with the concept of these important ladies. One being, in some instances, while this is controversial in the Christian tradition, there are those who are willing to acknowledge that perhaps Mary Magdalene had a more important role in the Jesus narrative. In fact, there was even a recent um, shred of papyrus that argues that perhaps she was the wife of Jesus. Well, it's very interesting to me that we have the Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene and even other Marys, all with the name Mary, and we also see great ladies that play very similar roles that were known as the Mary in the comedic narrative. We're going to deal with that in the final one. Now, let's be clear. I do not have the time. I will not have the time to go through all seven of these. We are going to cover these three today. The Ascension into Heaven under A, V for Virgins, Yes, Reggie, Yes, Ankh, Yes, Garfield. I am saying that Ast was a virgin. And I'm going to prove it to you again. And then we're going to deal with R for refugees. You're going to see these come forward today. Let's continue. Let's begin with ascension into heaven, the A, the A. First of all, I want you to recognize that the deity on the right is a deity that the Greeks called Osiris. But he was initially known as, and I'll render his name as Asar. Now, let's be clear. It's possible that it sounded a little different. The comedic language does not transcribe some of its vowels. But I want you to be clear that Asar is the, the primary archetype of resurrection. So let's begin. Asar is the archetype for not just a deity who's betrayed, betrayed, murdered and resurrects, but also for the immortality of the human soul. This is a fundamental concept, one that some individuals alike to argue came forward only in Christianity. But we see this not just in Christianity, we see it in a lot of the Mediterranean region, but first we see it in the comedic tradition. And in the comedic tradition, um, influence all of the other, most of the other traditions in the Mediterranean region, including Judaism, including Christianity, and including Islam. Let's listen to what Carl Jung, yes, that Carl Jung, the Carl Jung that is the, um, the, the, the uh, psychiatrist and scholar on the human mind. Listen to what he says about this. Though Cyrus cult offers an excellent example of this. At first, only Pharaoh participated in the transformation of the god, since he alone had an Osiris, but later the nobles of the empire quite an Osiris too. And finally, this development culminated in the Christian idea that everyone has an immortal soul and shares directly in the Godhead. This is from his book, Collected Works of C.G. Jung. Now keep in mind that this is a collection of his very voluminous work. So he didn't actually write this book, but it puts together his work. This one is volume nine, part one, um, actually uh, uh, produced in, 18, in 1980. More on Asar. Asar's death and resurrection allows the righteous access to heaven. I want you to understand that one of the names of Asar was Kenti Amentiu, first of the Westerners. Kenti Amentiu, first or sometimes issued as foremost, of the Westerners. I want you to keep sense of this for a second. If he is the first or the foremost of the Westerners, I want you to understand that the Kemetic people viewed a name for those people who would become ancestors as Westerners. So if he's the first of them, if he's the first of them, that means that his death and resurrection allows for the resurrection of everyone else. That is this argument. 
and the Kemetic people argued that it was only through the death and resurrection of Asar that we could all have the afterlife. Very, very similar. Take a look at what it says in the Encyclopedia of Ancient Egypt by Mar edited by Margaret Bunsen. Here's Kenti you. He was a divine being of Egypt, the forerunner of the god Osiris, dating to the pre-dynastic peri periods. Called the foremost of the Westerners, he was depicted as a jackal. Kenti Amentiu was first depicted as a jackal. The title indicates that Kenti Amentiu was associated with the mortuary rituals as a guardian of the dead who went to, quote unquote, the West. Normally, the necropolis areas were locate, located on the Western shore of the Nile, sometimes addressed as Ophis. Kenti Amentiu was a warrior deity and navigator of the sun's nightly voyage to the Duat or underworld. His cultic shrines were in Abydos and Asut, and he was sometimes associated with Wepawet, the wolf deity. His cult was popular in the first dynasty. The pyramid texts of the fourth dynasty associated Kenta Amentiu with Osiris. Soon after Osiris became the foremost of the Westerners, and, Kenti and the Kenti Amentiu cult disappeared. I want you to understand that this, at the very least, you can say that these concepts were merged with the concept of Asar all the way, we're talking about 2,500 years, 2,500 years before, before the so-called mythological birth of Jesus. Those ideas were as old from the from old from the period of the birth of Jesus to they're older than the, from that period where we see them in writing to the birth of Jesus, the mythological birth of Jesus, than they are from the mythological birth of Jesus to today. That's how old this is. Let's think about that for a second. If the concept of Jesus as the savior of the world through his death and resurrection is 2,000 years old. These ideas were 2,500 years old before the mythological birth of Jesus. That's how old this is. That's how old this is. And then we see that Asar becomes a righteous ancestor. The Kemetic people called this sometimes Ma'akeru, or true of voice. Ma'akeru. And I want you to recognize that um, in order if you are rectified, if you are ma'akeru upon death and you have your heart weighed and you are seen as righteous, this is symbolic, by the way, then you see that you become a sar in the afterlife. So the concept of resurrection is connected to the concept of a sar. This comes, oh, by the way, you're looking here at the, um, as I would call it, merkut or pyramid of unas. And on the interior, you're going to see that there is there are glyphs from ceiling to floor. Ceiling to floor. This is amazing. And this particular um, reign of the King Unas was somewhere around 2345 to 2315 BCE. That means that we're talking about a deity. Uh, uh, we're talking about this building being um, nearly 4,400 years old. That's how old it is. Today, it looks like rubble. Do you see the image on the top? And that's because the modern people, the Arabs, started tearing off the, the, um, the polished limestone. So that is what, um, uh, this is what is left over. In fact, I can tell you as someone who leads tours here and is always there, that this, well, uh, that, that's neither here. I'm not gonna talk about it now, but um, take a look at, at, at what is said about Unas in the Merkut text. It says, and this is utterance 213. So you can look it all up yourself, right? Okay. O Unas, you have not gone dead. You have gone alive to sit on the throne of Asar. Your scepter is in your hand that you may give orders to the living and handle, and the handle of your lotus-shaped scepter in your hand. Give orders to those of the mysterious sites talking about the people who are dead. So you can see that here, Unas is not dead. He actually goes to sit on the throne of Asar. Unas becomes Asar. This is very, very early. And Asar is 
the righteous murdered who becomes ascended and resurrected. Let's continue. You'll also see archetypes of this ascension into heaven on the judgment scene on the papyrus of Hunefer. That's what you're seeing here. You're seeing Hunefer enter as someone who has just died up here. Hopefully you can see my mouse moving. He gives an offering to all of these judges. Unfortunately, half of the judges believe that he has done enough to be warranted in afterlife. And half of them um, do not agree. That's why they do not have onks on their knees. And so because there is a split decision here, now Hunefer is brought to the scales by Anpu, who the Greeks called Anubis. His heart is now weighed by the feather of Ma'at. Can you see Ma'at here? Ma'at here has transformed into the scales itself. Now, Tehuti reads the, the, um, the uh, results of the weighing, and now we see Heru take um, Hunefer, who is now rectified, who is now Ma'at Heru, into meat his father, Asar. I want you to see something interesting here. This is after he comes from the scales, right? Did you see where we are? We're looking at this uh, close up right here. This is after he is, he is vindicated by the scales. And you'll see right here that his name is no longer Jesu Nefer. By the way, you can see this, um, this twisted, um, uh, 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 square section is the huh, and then the bird here is the oo. So this is who, and then you see the nefer symbol, and then here's the determinative, which says that he is a a, a man of honor. So and above this name, who nefer, you look to the top and you'll see the eye, you'll see the throne, and then you'll see the the image of a deity. This is the determinative for that. So in here, you are seeing his name is now Asar Hunefer. So Asar is how we are able to enter into the afterlife. I think it's also interesting that we're seeing that Heru is who takes Hunefer to greet his father. You remember the, the section of John 14, 5 and 6 that says, Thomas say, saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither, whither you goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus say, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In this instance, can't we see that in order for you to enter, let me go back for a second, in order for you to come unto the Father Asar, you must go through Heru. This is also what we are seeing here. These concepts are much older than they have been given credit for. Let's continue. Let's also talk about the resurrection of Asar. The resurrection of, uh, um, of Asar comes forward in late December rituals in ancient Kemet. I know that Garfield said he's never going to bring up that December 25th stuff again. And I said, no, Garfield, you're wrong. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to dare you to prove me wrong. He also says, well, you have to understand that you're following old stuff that's not been proven. I want you to see an article in the publication of the Archaeological Institute of America. And when was this article pu published? November 22nd, 2022. November 22nd, 2022. What's the title? 4,000 year old tomb in Egypt was oriented to the winter solstice. This is, a, this is not just new, this is almost hot off the presses. But you know, here's the deal. I'm not gonna just read what's available on the web, right? I actually read the scholarly article that created this piece in archeology. span that's what you have to do if you're going to try to understand these things. Here's the scholarly article. Here is the scholarly article. It came forward in the Mediterranean Archaeology and Archaeometry um, Journal. That's where this comes from. And the title of the scholarly article was Solar Geometry and the Organization of the Annual Cycle 
through architecture and the funerary landscape in Quebec, El Hawa. It was written by several authors and it was actually um, received and accepted. Look at this. They gave it to them in July and it was, it was received. That means that they issued it. No, I'm sorry. It was received in in June and they accepted it in July. It's telling you when the actual scholarly body received the article and um, actually um, put it forward. That's what we're seeing. What does the article say? Here's a part of it. It says the QH33, in QH33, that's the tomb that they're looking at, by the way. That's the tomb that they're looking at. Um, the worship area is made up of a of a forecourt with steep structures at the north and south ends. A large courtyard delimited, delimited by a large perimeter wall, a large door cut out of the monumental facade, a chapel with pillars, and a niche for the statue of the governor where the main rituals for the deceased, deceased would have been performed. So the person that died here had their statue there. I want you to understand that. We're continuing. The door cut out of stone of the stone plane to project the light inside is wider than the niche, compensating for the subtle deviation and ensuring that the sanctuary was fully illuminated at dawn on the winter solstice. Did you hear what I said? In this person's tomb, the statue of the governor would be fully illuminated at dawn of the winter solstice. Why do they say that? They're saying that in this instance, we are following the journey of the sun in its different phases, meant linking to the daily rebirth in the same way that Osiris came back to life. Symbolically placed in the niche, the Ka could look at the complete cycle of the sun once he transited to the other side, to the underworld. This is a scholarly article which was printed just a little over a month ago. They are telling you that the winter solstice was connected to the resurrection of a deity who was murdered. That's what they're telling you. And you need to know that the winter solstice actually occurs on December 21st, roughly now, December 21st or 22nd. And this peculiar movement of the sun lasts for three days. I hope you understand that the winter solstice, it's the part where we have the um, the smallest, the least amount of light. The sun rises in the sky at the lowest point. And then at the solstice, solstice means solstice, sun still. Actually, what happens is, is that um, the sun actually rises in the same part at the low part in the sky for two plus days, and then on the third day, it begins to move again and we get more life. So the ancients described this as the sun dying and the sun being reborn. I know that we sometimes have described this as sun, S-O-N, but in actuality, it was originally the sun, S-U-N. By the way, those people who did this article used a curious piece of technology that allowed them to look at the stars, the position of the sun, and all of the equinox and solstice events according to the time of the tomb. So they were able through this, um, this computer package to look at how the stars and the sun would have occurred at the time that it was, that it was made. Um, and so they weren't just looking at it now, they were looking at it then. And so there's some subtle deviation because of the sort of what we call the, the process of the procession of the equinoxes. The world is not exactly in the same place. It takes 2,500 years for things to be exactly the same in the sun. I don't, in the skies, I don't have uh, all the time to explain that to you. Read the article. Read the article. Now, some of you are going to say Jesus wasn't born in at December 25th. First of all, let me say to you, I am arguing that Jesus is a mythological character. So there was no birth, actual birth of Jesus. And I'd also love for you to tell the 2.2 or 2.4 billion Christians 
that Jesus is not born in December. Because if I remember correctly, all the ones I knew was celebrating it last week. I want you to understand that spiritual traditions do not uh, uh, appear fully formed, that they develop and occur over a lengthy period of time. So you could argue that there was a point in the Christian tradition where people described the birth of Jesus at a different time of the year. That I'm not even debating that. I'm not debating that. I am saying that this particular piece was taken from other traditions and placed there. By the way, even the other day, I would argue, was taken from earlier traditions. I, I can say that to you. I'm not doing that now. I'm not doing that now. You can't pretend that this is irrelevant. I even heard a pastor, we're talking about the pastor of um, oh, what's it called? Fellows, Epiphany Fellowship, I think it is, in, in, in Philadelphia, who behind my back says all kinds of things and makes documentaries saying things about me. But of course, he'll never say it to me directly, even though we share the same cell. We share cell phone. We have each other's cell phone numbers. He just likes to just talk to his home crowd about me, which is offensive. And he says, well, none of this matters because Jesus wasn't born in, in December. I think that's interesting because I also played the video. We're talking about Pastor Eric Mason, by the way. I played the video of his, um, his church members dancing at Christmas with a Christmas tree on his um, dais right next to the altar. Pastor Mason, could you tell your followers that Jesus wasn't born in Christmas? Can you tell your followers that, Pete, that uh, Jesus wasn't born on December 25th? Because they seem to be confused. I thought you was the leader. That's what we continue to see. Let's continue. Let's move. By the way, the alignment of the winter solstice has been important in comedic architecture, com comedic spiritual architecture for thousands of years. Take a look at the winter solstice alignment at Karnak Temple, properly known as a pet is soot. This is just a few years ago. Look at this. Do you see the sunrise aligned directly with the central columns of the temple? That's not by error. This is what the comedic people did because they were telling an important spiritual uh, narrative. That's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. We also see this. This is at the temple that was built by Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut's mortuary temple, which is which should be properly known as Jesser Jesseru. Look at the alignment, the 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 dawn, winter solstice sun coming through the temple. By the way, it was going to come through the temple and illuminate the holy of holies. Look at this. This isn't by mistake that all of these structures were developed this way. And then you will also see this. Does anyone know the tomb of Karakamun? Does anyone know the tomb of Karakamun? When you look through this courtyard, can you see that the area with the statue of Asar is completely illuminated, completely enraptured with the light of the sun? Maybe you can't see it clearly. Let me take it a little closer, because some of you might not even know the tomb of the Karakam, of Karakamun. But there's a certain scholar who for over 10 years has been leading the excavations on this tomb. Who is that scholar? Does anyone know what the name of the scholar, who was the scholar that's leading the excavations in Kemet, in Egypt? There's Dr. Daniel Arosh. He better remember because we went there together. <laughs> So this is Brother uh, uh, Anthony Browder. Take a look at him here. That's the area that you might not see further in. This is the Asara statue in the sun court. Look at how it is illuminated. Look at how it's illuminated. If you look closely, you will see that that is a statue of Asar. One of the members of Team Garfield had the nerve to say this about Tony Browder just a little while ago, a few days ago. Take a listen. I, I feel real comfortable because I hear mistakes being made. So one, Dr. Ben was not an expert. 
Uh, Anthony Broad is not an expert, so they're going to make more mistakes than the experts. I think this is a mistake. Did you look at my face? Did you look at my face? I'm like, what the heck are you? They're not experts. Dr. Ben traveled and took groups to Kemet, studied Kemet for dozens of, for um, decades, and took probably over 100 trips to Kemet. And Anthony Browder literally leads an archaeological dig. Uh, uh, they're not experts, though. Brother Ankh, you, you, please. Um, so we need to realize Garfield is going to bring the experts. And although he may not win because of the uh -oh. level because of the level of understanding it is going to take for the community to get to where we actually at right jabari is at one space right he deals with the dr Benz, and he you know we love the death out of dr ben but 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 we, we raised the bar i know for myself and for garfield as far as actually dealing with real academia experts so he, he's really teaching something you would learn at at Harvard, Yale, the theology school. This, this is what they teach. So we, we, we're we not worried about Garfield doing what he's doing, because he's going to be right on point. Uh, he's really he's really big up in Africa and what African people did. We never have to lie about it. And, and it's going to be a lesson in there. So Jabari does what he does well, but Garfield, Garfield is the guy that brings theology to the community. See, that's the difference. So And, and Garfield is not concerned about if y'all like it or not. Right? That's not the point. The point is, he's educating you. What Garfield is talking about, you can take to any major university and can teach that. What Jabari is teaching about, they're going to kick him out of class like knock it. They're going to say knock it off now. Stop that. They're going to say knock it off. You can't you know, knock that off. That's not legitimate. So, you know what I mean? Although Jabari does, he does well. And, and, and he makes the community feel very comfortable with their pillars. Garfield snatched the pillar and said, get the fuck up. So it's a difference there. So, you know, you know, I, I'm waiting. This is the battle. We ain't had a battle like this in three, four years, bro. Like, we're actually waiting for this to see these, see these two good brothers, you know. And I think this is the best one, though. This is like one of them fights you've been waiting for. We've been waiting for Garfield and Jabari. It's that time, bro. We really want to see this. I really want to see Jabari defeat Garfield. I, really, I want to see you do it, Jabari. I really want to see what you got. You know what I think? I'm going to say this so, 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 so Garfield will do it. Hey, Garfield, don't let that man unravel you in there, yo. He's going to be, he's going to be concise. He's going to be well-spoken. He's going to slow the game down. If you go in there talking, you're getting frustrated, yo. He's going to get you, bro. Go in there. Know that you got the best weapon. Know that you got the thermonuclear weapon. Be very concise when you employ them. Don't be super long with it. Don't have a whole lot of words in your slide. Go in there and be acro and finish them off. That's my advice for Garfield. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, I think this is amazing. Uh, I, I wanted to play it a little bit longer, but I'm not going to. It, I, I actually challenged Ankh. I said, it's amazing that he makes such poor arguments all the time. It's amazing that he is saying that Garfield is the one that's bringing information that you would find in a major university like Harvard or Yale, two Ivy League schools. And only one of us on that panel had attended an Ivy League school, and that's Jabari Osaze. So it's just interesting that he said that. It's bizarre that he says that those individuals are not experts. I mean, does leading an archaeological dig with the permission and adulation of the Egyptian government make you an expert? The Egyptian government thinks he's an expert. Uh, uh, listen, uh, the stuff that they say is is just so poorly um, uh, structured. Let's continue. Uh, Let's go to the second uh, the second part of the Savior's model that I'm going to cover tonight. Virgins, virgins. Some of you have been saying that Ost is not a virgin. This is the time that I'm going to put it up. Let's see you refute it. Let's see you refute it. I don't have to I, listen. I want you to understand. Sometimes people say, "Don't, um, uh, don't give all the information out." I want you to understand that I'm giving it out because it's already been there. It's been out for thousands of years. It's, there's just some people that are unfamiliar with it. 
So take a look. You're seeing Asta on the left and Mary and Jesus on the right. And I want you to acknowledge that the, the um, similarities between the two are astounding. In fact, all over Europe and even some of the other parts of the world, you're going to see that Mary and Jesus have been worshipped as the Black Madonna. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why are there over 2,000 Black Madonnas? Most in some of the oldest churches in the Western world. Is it because they recognize that this is connected to us? Is that what we are actually seeing? And um, I also see Amir Eshrafa is active in the chat. My friend, come forward. Come forward. Everyone deserves a little bit of a spanking. I think that you're going to get a lot of one. So I, I really want you to come forward, okay? You're making a lot of comments. If I was going to be debating you, I wouldn't be commenting every time. I'd be looking at the arguments. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe a little bit less time on the keyboard and a little bit more time listening would be um, more helpful, would be much more helpful for you to, um, to address this. Okay, let's continue. I think it, oops, wrong way. I think it's also interesting that Ost was then sometimes turned into this. That is actually supposed to be Ost or Isis with Heru on the left now. As it goes into the rest of the, of, of the Western world, this is one of the things that we see. This is one of the things that we see. We need to be really clear. Amir, I know you're saying you see too many problems. I would love to hear your analysis of it. You and I will get a chance to, um, to address this. I'd love for you to send me an email with your credentials so I understand who you are. I know you, you uh, seemed articulate in our discuss, dis, uh, discussion in the chat, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I'd love, listen, I, I'd, I want to have this conversation so that pull it forward. I want to be able to see it. Okay, let's continue. One of the things that we see that's so common is not just the image of Ost nursing Heru, um, ensuring that that important child would be able to um, become uh, an adult and do the work they must do, but also we see that Ost and Mary share their sorrows. On the left, you're seeing images. The one on the upper left, I believe, is, I know that's in the Louvre. I just saw it this year. And the one a little bit further down, I believe, is in the Brooklyn Museum. You're seeing Ostir in sorrow because of the murder of a Tsar. And on the right, of course, there is the most popular statue um, known as the Pieta, where you see Mary cradling the body of her dead son. Um, this is a, a reference to um, uh, the similarities between them. In fact, I think that the fact that these two divine women in both of these narratives had to deal with sorrow, had to deal with things that just went wrong in their lives, this is one of the reasons why they spoke so effectively to followers in the years that people have been calling on them. Because even though you are sacred, even though you are a queen, even though you're the mother of the divine, sometimes bad stuff happens. Let's keep it really simple. And you must perse persevere. This is the reason why Ast was so popular and went into the Western world, all the way into Russia, Germany, France. And it's another reason why, even though the Christian church tried to down, many times tried to downplay Mary, the practitioners would not allow it. In fact, Sometimes they would just pray to Mary, not even to Jesus, but to Mary. That's how serious this is. So let's listen to what um, E.A. Wallace Budge says about this, because I've also been told that none of the scholars agree with me on this. That's what Reggie said. Well, this is for you, Reggie. This is what E.A. Wallace Budge says. He says, among the various people by whom ISIS is venerated must be mentioned those of Syria, who identified her with certain of their local goddesses, and it is clear that the early Christians bestowed some of her attributes upon the Virgin Mary. There is little doubt 
that in her character of the loving and protecting mother, she appealed strongly to the imagination of all the Eastern peoples among whom her cult came, and that the pictures and sculptures wherein she is represented in the act of suckling her child Horus formed the foundation for the Christian figures and paintings of the Madonna and child. Several of the incidents in the wanderings of the Virgin with the child in Egypt are recorded in the apocryphal gospels reflect scenes in the life of Isis as described in the text found on the Metternich Stele. More on that today. And many of the attributes of Isis, the godmother, the mother of Horus, and of Neith, the goddess of Seth, are identical with those of Mary and the mother of Christ. This is from God, The Gods of Egypt, printed 1969 by E.A. Wallace Budge. There are many, many scholars that argue this. There are many scholars. Pastor Bennett says, it's found nowhere in scripture. It doesn't matter what is found in scripture because all of the practices of a tradition are not simply in a book. I know you know that. I know you know that. When you pray, do you clasp your hands? Does it say that in scripture that you should do that? Does it say that you should do the sign of the cross? Many Christians do. There are many things that become part of traditions that are not simply in scripture. You're making it sound like that book is the manual for Christian tradition. Well, you have to also recognize it is not a book. You have to recognize that there are many books that made up the Bible and that some individuals over a large number of years put those books together. There are other books. Why did they choose those? Why did they choose those? So uh, you're acting like the Bible is one book. It is not. It is not. And the traditions of Christianity, as in every other spiritual traditions, do not emerge fully formed at their outset. There are things that happen that occur through the way that people practice. So you can't just ignore them simply because you don't see it in the Bible. That's ridiculous. If I followed you around, Pastor Bennett, for a month, I would find many things that you do as a Christian that are not in the text. But all of your followers would recognize it. All of your followers would recognize it. Let's continue. We're not going to just give you E.A. Wallace Budge. This is a recent book. This is in Osiris, Death and Afterlife of a God, 2005, by Bojana Mostrov, page 113. By the way, Garfield, I think um, he uses the cover of the book in one of his videos, but I don't know if he read it. Here's the book. Excuse me, Brother Jabari, how much more time you got to take questions? I know you got to get out. Quite a bit more. I'm not, I'm not, I've been going for about an hour. Quite a bit more. Okay. So let's continue. I'm going to try to move a little bit more quickly, okay? Here we go. This is for Bas, uh, Bojana Mostov. She says, at this time, the wisdom of Solomon was written and eventually included the Apocrypha. The author was unknown, but he was a Jew who wrote in Greek and had studied Stoic and Epicurean philosophy, as well as the Egyptian rites. This could be accomplished only in Alexandria. He introduced Sophia, or wisdom, as an intermediary between the God of the Old Testament and his people. She is more beautiful than the sun and all the order of the stars being compared with light. She is found beyond it. The similarity of Sophia to Isis also points to an Egyptian inspiration. In Christianity, the role of Sophia was taken over by Mary. This is a PhD level Egyptologist who actually worked at the Brooklyn Museum, worked at the British Museum, worked at the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, uh, they, when they say that no one says this, I don't know who they're look, what they're reading. Here's another by Jan Asman, probably one of the most the best known Egyptologist in the world from Germany. He says, salvation and eternal life are Christian concepts. And we might think that the Egyptian myth can all too easily be viewed through the lens of the Christian tradition. Quite the contrary. In my opinion, Christian myth is itself thoroughly stamped by Egyptian tradition, by the myth of Isis and Osiris, from which the beginning had to do with salvation and eternal life. I'm telling you that there are many scholars that is, I'm not gonna even read this last one. This is from uh, Marvin Meyer in the Ancient Mysteries, a source book. But once again, we see 
just I'll just read this section here. Given the popularity of the Egyptian goddess Isis in the Roman world, we are not surprised to observe that the worship of Isis shaped the veneration of the Virgin Mary in Christian circles. We are going to see this for a very long time. Now, let's look at the sources. Let's look at the sources. Some of these I showed you on Sonnetter before. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. This comes from the coffin text. Is Ost a virgin? This comes from the coffin text. By the way, you should know the coffin texts are 2100, at least 2100 BCE. We're talking about more than 2,000 years before the stories of Mary, Jesus, Joseph. 2,000 years. Once again, as old at the time of the purported birth of Jesus as the time we are from that period, the purported birth of Jesus, to now. That's how old this is. Listen to what it says. We begin to hear that Asar is a soul. Some people say, well, Asar was, was a human being. So how could he act, she actually have a, a virgin birth if Asar is a human being? But he says very clearly that he is a soul, causing the soul to escape from the corpse. Another book for going out into the day. I am this great soul of Asar, who um, is whom the Neturu commanded to copulate with him. Now, did you hear, hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You are hearing that Asar is saying that the copulation that occurred in the birth of Heru is a copulation with a soul, a spirit. He living on high by day, I have remade Asar from the efflux, which was in his flex, flesh, from the seed which issued from his phallus at the going out into the day that he may, co may copulate with it. I'm not going to read the rest of it here. You can read the rest of it here. It's utterance 94 of the coffin text. First of all, they're setting that Asar is a soul, not a, a human being at the time. And then we see also in the coffin text in utterance 148 that Ast is impregnated by thunder. Remember, 2100 BCE. 2100 BCE. The taking shape as a falcon. The lightning flash strikes and the Neturu are afraid. Ast wakes up pregnant with the seed of her brother Asar. Did you hear that? The woman raises herself in a hurry, her heart rejoicing over the seed of her brother Asar. And she says, oh, Neturu, I am Ast, the sister of Asar, who wept for the father of the Neturu Asar, who parted the slaughterings of the two lands. His seed is within my body, and it is as the son of the foremost of the Aeneid who will rule this land and who will become the heir to Geb and who will speak for his father and who will slay the enemy of his father Asar that I have molded the shape of the Neturu within my egg. So we're seeing here in the coffin text, 2000 years plus before the narrative of Mary that Astir is impregnated by a lightning flash. Then there's the Papyrus of Nesmin, also should be known as Nessi Amsu. Um, this is on the um, the Bremer Rhind Papyrus, which is in the British Museum. Um, and here's the description, the translation, the analysis of the text by R.O. Faulkner. Of course, Reggie knows R.O. Faulkner. Some of you should know R.O. Faulkner. R.O. Faulkner is actually one of the scholars that is most known for the translation and analysis of the comedic language. And this was in the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology. Take a look at what he writes. This is in the footnotes. Yes, as a scholar, you must read the footnotes. I learned that. I'll tell you that story at another time. Listen to what he says. Here begins the, st the stanzas of the Festival of the Two Kites, which is celebrated in the Temple of Osiris, first of the Westerners. First of the Westerners, the great god, Lord of Abydos. In the fourth month of inundation, on the 22nd day down to the 26th day. They're telling you about the celebration of Asar. The entire temple shall be sanctified and now shall be brought in two women, pure of body and virgin, with the hair of their bodies removed, their heads adorned with wigs. What is he describing here? He is actually describing those women that would be used in the the, the magisterial um, acting out of this ritual. The priest wrote, who should play Ast and Inbethet? 
who the Greeks called Isis and Nephthys. And the priests are writing as they do this ceremony for people to view that the women who should play them should be women of beautiful, pure bodies and virgin. That's who should play these two ladies. And I want to go further that um, in the commentary, it even says that um, the description of the women who are virgin in the in the comedic language here is nen wepet sen, who have not been opened. Nen wepet sen. He also gives you the glyphs that are read on the uh, on the papyrus on the papyrus Remer Rhine. Now you should know the papyrus is in higher hieratic. I can in um demotic. I can't read demotic at all. But when he actually translates it, he puts it in the formal version of the comedic language. I want you to see Nen Wepit Sen. Can you see it on the screen? Can you see it on the screen? Here it is. Do you see this piece here? This is supposed to be like someone shrugging. This is the negative. Nen. Nen. This is Nen by itself, but often the comedic language will duplicate the final consonant sound in a word. So this is Nen. Wep. Now there's something missing here. Wep. This is probably the the um the female. Wep pet. Sen. So actually, this says senu. See the three strokes? So they're talking about both of the ladies as virgins. Nen wepet senu. Nen wepet senu. By the way, I'm reading the comedic language. I tell you, I do it all the time on Sinetta's channel. Some of y'all ain't listening. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue. And this is also part of what is being read here. Ost speaks. She says, come to your house. Come to your house, you of on. Come to your house. Your foes are not. Oh, good musicians, come to your house. Behold me. I am your beloved sister. You shall not part from me. Oh, good youth, come to your house. Long, long have I not seen you. My heart mourns for you. My eyes seek you. I search for you to see you. Come to your beloved, come to your beloved. This is what these ladies are saying in the ceremony. And you're seeing that this ceremony occurs in a part of the shrine that is known as the Hall of the Appearings. Because they were praying, these two ladies, for the in the area where Asar was supposedly dead, for his soul to return. And this image on the Papyrus of Ani is supposed to be describing this ceremony. Do you see the two ladies, Austin and Bethet? In between them is the Jed column, the symbol of the resurrection of Asar. And we can see that he is alive again. Do you see the Ankh? His soul lives. You see the Ka raising to the sun. By the way, raising to the sun. This is also, I could have used this for the winter solstice. We're not going to do that today. But I want you to understand that this image, in many ways, is this image. In many ways, it's this image. Look at the similarities. I'm not just looking at one picture and the other and saying these are the same. I read you. I read you the glyphs. I read you the text. They're praying for the soul of Asar to return. And that is exactly what occurred in this image of Jesus rolling away the stone for the tomb. Let's continue. In the final analysis, I'm going to do this part very quickly. I want you to recognize that so many people argue about whether Ast is a virgin. They look at one description that it seems like she made a, a penis out of wax or the, the Tekken is the penis, the obelisk is the penis. Um, she brought Asar back to life so she had sex with him. Maybe she had sex with a corpse, a dead body. And they say that means she's not a virgin. Let me say to you, it doesn't matter what they think. Listen carefully. You have not heard this on this channel. This is the stuff I teach in the shrine. It doesn't matter what they think. What matters is whether the people who are describing us described her as a virgin. It doesn't matter whether you read the story and say, well, that's not a virgin. It doesn't matter. You could disagree with them. They were the ones that said she was a virgin. And in fact, they promulgated, promulgated it as such to the rest of the world. The rest of the world thought of her as a virgin as well. How can I tell you that? 
Who here has heard of the narrative of Corey Cosmo? Who's heard of Corey Cosmo? This is perhaps the world's first hermetic text. That's what this is. That's what this is. It comes about at around 510 BCE, over a, almost a half a millennia before the story of, G, of, of Jesus and Mary. And this story goes into the rest of, this is not just Kemet. Cory Cosmo actually goes into the rest of the known world at the time, the rest of the Mediterranean. People who could read knew this story. What does Cory Cosmo talk about? First of all, you should know it's about the studies of Ost with Heru, Isis with Horus. And the name of the book is Virgin of the World. Virgin of the World. The rest of the people in the Mediterranean understood that the Kemetic people were calling her a virgin. That's what we're seeing here. It doesn't matter whether you read the story and say, is this virginity or not? What matters is whether they promulgated it as virginity to the world. And this, Cory Cosmo, proves it so. Let me read for a second from Virgin of the World by, they say it's, it was written by Hermes Thice Great, Hermes Tresmegustus. It says, and Horus thereupon said, how was it, mother, then, that the earth received God's efflux? He's saying, how did we receive the spirit of Asar that created me? And Isis says, I may not tell the story of this birth, for it is not permitted to describe the origin of your descent, O Horus, son of mighty power, lest afterwards the way of birth of the immortal gods should be known unto men, except so far that God the Marduk, the universal orderer and architect, sent for a little, while thy mighty sire Osiris and the mightiest goddess Isis, that they might help the world for all the things needed them. She's telling you, and he's telling you, that it is the spirit of Asar. The efflux is the way that it's translated. The efflux from inside Asar that gives him birth. And Heru is asking, I don't understand how that happens. And she says, it is a divine secret in the book called The Virgin of the World about Asar and Heru. Go read it yourself. This particular translation is from 1906. It's the GRS Mead translation. translation. Um, and then there's also refugees. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to even go into refugees. I'm just not going to do it. I want you to know, however, that the story of Jesus and Mary and Joseph escaping into Kemet, there's a reason why they escaped to Kemet. It's also because I think, this is, this is now me thinking, this is my analysis rather than everything that I can prove according to the sources. I think it's because there's an echo to an earlier journey for safety. And that is why the writers described it. It is described clearly in Matthew, um, 2 Matthew 2, 13 to 16. And um, it describes that um, uh, Jesus, it, that Joseph has a dream. And that's the reason why he knows that they have to escape because Herod is going to kill all of these babies in order to try to get to Jesus. That's what it is. But you should know, that if you look at the story that is on the Metternich stele, it is very similar. You hear the story of how Ast must hide with her son in order to save him. So Mary and Joseph are not the only ones that go on a journey to save the baby so the baby can become an adult. Ast does this with Heru. And it's on the Metternich stele, which is in the Metropolitan Museum. I should have put a picture of me describing it here as well. Not going to go into it now. Okay, that's part one of the savior's model. There's also, these will go faster, Sonnetter. There's also early Christians and their veiled confessions and Christian um, destruction of the comedic tradition. Let's talk about part two, which is early Christians and their veiled confessions. Um, I want you to understand that as we look at the early Christian church, we see unexplainable behavior. The early adherents and, and leaders of Christianity do something very strange from the first to the third centuries. Um, they advance a new spiritual tradition. They say it's new. 
which is very similar to the other ones that are in the the that are popular in the world. And then they say that because theirs is literal, it is better. That is part of what they do that is very interesting that early people thought was um, ridiculous and ridiculed them about. They take liberally from these oral, oral traditions, sometimes verbatim, sometimes from those words, and then they make l ridiculous arguments about why they're taking um, is okay. And when they're called on it, they simply just make even more ridiculous arguments. In fact, this is the origin of the entire apologetics movement in the ancient world. They use phrases, iconography, events, and even characters, which all seem to be stolen. And then they describe an all-powerful, beneficent God who is jealous and wrathful. Are you telling me that the creator of the entire universe, the, the individual, the character that, that created all things, who's supposed to be a God of love, is jealous about other deities? Does that make sense to you? I want you to understand that this story, if you read it critically, will show you that it doesn't make sense. It is propaganda. They don't want you to read about the other deities. So they say, I'm jealous. Don't read about them. Look at this. This comes from um, the, the, uh, Ki the uh, King James uh, Bible, uh, uh, Exodus 34, 14 and 16. It says, for you must not worship any other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. For when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you take some of their daughters as brides for your sons, their daughters will prostitute themselves to their gods and cause your sons to do the same. I'm jealous and I don't want you to know about other uh, creators because other divine forces because I'm jealous. Even though I created the world, everything. I'm all powerful and all knowing, but I'm jealous. Does that make sense? Let's continue in Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 7. He says, I, the Lord, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You should have no other gods before me. Why is this all-powerful being jealous? Does that make sense? The only reason why this occurs is because it is propaganda. It's propaganda. Let's go. Here goes Justin Martyr. I love Justin Martyr. He says, and this is a larger quote than the one I used before. By the way, you should know the smaller quote is not as powerful as the larger quote. Pastor Bennett, I'm coming for you later. Let's look. This is in First Ch Apology, chapter two. It says, and when we say also that the word who is the first birth of God was produced without sexual union and that he, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven. We propound nothing different from what you believe regarding those uh, whom you esteem sons of Jupiter. In other words, he's saying we know that the sons of Jupiter are saying the same things that we say about Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. And here's a, another quote from his dialogues, chapter 69. He says, be well assured then, Tri, uh, trifo, that I am established in the knowledge of and faith in the scriptures by those counterfeits which he who is called the devil is said to have performed among the Greeks. In other words, all these older traditions were created, older traditions, by the way, were created by the devil. And, and, they are, and the devil is among the Greeks. Just as some were wrought by the Magi in Egypt and others by the false prophets in Elijah's days. For when they tell that Bacchus, son of Jupiter, was begotten by Jupiter's intercourse with Semele, and that he was the discoverer of the vine, and when they relate that being torn in pieces, by the way, he was torn in pieces, sound familiar? And having died, he rose again and ascended to heaven. When we introduce wine into his mysteries, when they introduce wine into his mysteries, do I not perceive that the devil has imitated the prophecy announced by the patriarch Jacob and recorded by Moses. I want you to understand this is a ridiculous argument because Dionysus, Bacchus, doing these things predates the biblical narrative, predates the Torah, 
predates um, the New Testament. And so when you see older things done by, when you see similar things done by older deities in the same area that they will then say that it was done, you, you have to, please, if you have any common sense, you have to say that don't make sense. Let's continue. Then there's St. Augustine, who then says, that which is known as the Christian religion, religion existed among the ancients and never did not exist from the beginning of the human race until the time when Christ came in the flesh, at which time the true religion, which already existed, began to be called Christianity. Once again, a really, really poor argument, a very poor argument, but that is what we are seeing. We are seeing that um, he's acknowledging that these traditions, these things that people did are older than Christianity. But in fact, he's saying that when ours was literal, then it became called um, Christianity. These are the excuses, the apologies of the early Christian fathers. And then, of course, there's the, the image of the Kepper, the symbol of being reborn, of creating oneself in the comedic tradition. I don't have the time to explain the Kepper, what the Greeks called the scarab for an extensive period of time. But I do want you to know that early Christian fathers often identify Jesus as this symbol, the symbol of coming into being and creating oneself. They use the terms, not me. St. Ambrose says that Jesus is the good Scarabaeus who rolled up before him the hitherto unshapen mud of our bodies. That's St. Ambrose, Ambrose. Using the image of the comedic tradition and saying, this is Jesus, the Christ. Can you see the problem here? This clearly means that he's very familiar with the tradition, not the tradition in other places, in Kemet. And he's using it to describe their deity. Don't you see the problem here? He's squealing on himself, y'all. And it's not just him. How about St. Epiphanius? He says, that Jesus is the Scarabaeus of God. I want you to understand that these individuals who would create Christianity knew where they were taking it from. This is theft of the highest order. And I'm gonna go briefly, quickly through some of the texts that they took, verbatim, largely. You should know that I continue to talk about the instructions of a minimal. This is a comedic text, which was taken verbatim, verbatim, word for word and placed in the Christian Bible. And that's still not, even though scholars have known this for decades, that's still not what Christians say. <laughs> Welcome to our segment where we take a deep dive into the Bible. The Bible is accessible to everyone, yet parts of it can be surprising and challenging to comprehend if we do not understand its cultural context. In the deep dive into the Bible, we will talk about things that just might surprise you. Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Then you look at Proverbs 10.1 and it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise child, brings joy to a father. A foolish child brings grief to a mother. Again, mentions Solomon. And then you jump down to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 1. It says, these are more Proverbs of Solomon, collected by the advisors of King Hezekiah of Judah. Now, the word translated collected there can also mean transcribed. And that would suggest that some of those Proverbs, uh, perhaps chapters 25 through 29, were produced by scribes living in the days of Hezekiah, approximately around 715 to 687 BC. And, that, and of course, that would have been after the lifetime of Solomon. So it sounds pretty straightforward that the author of Proverbs is Solomon. He wrote Proverbs. External evidence would substantiate that, that it is found in 1 Kings that says that Solomon wrote 3,000 Proverbs and so here it is once again, we're being told that Solomon wrote instructions of a minimo. That's what we're being told. That's what we're being told. Solomon. Solomon. 
Is that what scholars say now? Look at what um, Jaroslav Czerny said. He says, since the 21st dynasty date inevitably makes Amenemope chronologically prior to the earliest possible date for Proverbs, this would definitely establish the priority of Amenemope over Proverbs and make influence in the other direction impossible. 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 Now I'm going to tell you, once I read this, the debate is over, really. Because this is plagiarism. And to plagiarize is stealing. That's what we're saying here. If you take a text and you take them verbatim into your tradition and do not give credit, in fact, even today, Christians don't say that this is the work of a minimal. Even today, this is plagiarism. This is theft. This is stealing. Let's call it what it is. They would like you to believe you don't know what stealing is. They would like you to believe you don't know what plagiarism is. The reality is that the early Christians stole their tradition from Kemet. Amenemope, I'd love for you, for these people who are disagreeing, to show me the translations of Amenemope in Greek in Latin, in all those things that the Christians got it from. They must have gotten this from someplace else. They took it verbatim. Verbatim. Do you know what the word verbatim means? Once I drop this, the debate is over. And by the way, they didn't just borrow it. They then called those people who created these great spiritual traditions, who created these standards, demons. They said they were uneducated. They called them pagans. They destroyed their temples. They destroyed their books. They're hiding their theft. You know what it looks like. If you see someone wearing someone's clothes outside, all their jewelry, and then you hear that person burnt down their house, what would you say they did? <laughs> that person would be going up north for a long time. This is theft. This is stealing. Look at just Proverbs 22, 20, and Amenemope chapter 30, line 539. Proverbs, I have not written, have I not written for you 30 sayings of counsel and knowledge? Amenemope says, look to these 30 chapters. They inform, they educate. By the way, you should know that when scholars found Amenemope, they were able to translate this better. That first one used to say 30 weeks because the person who wrote who transcribed it made an error. They used the wrong word. When they find a minimal, they were able to correct it. Proverbs 22, 17 to 18. Incline thy ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart to my doctrine. For it is pleasant if thou keep them in thy belly, that they may be established together upon thy lips. Listen to Menemope. Give thine ear and hear what I say, and apply thy heart to apprehend. It is good for thee to place them in thy heart. Let them rest in the casket of thy belly, that they may act as a peg upon thy tongue. What else do I need to say, family? If you don't get it, it's because you don't want to get it. It's because you don't want to get it. I don't need to go into all of these. Do some research, folks. Do some research. I'd say 99.9% .9 of Christians have never heard this. Have never heard it. But their pastors who went to seminary, guess what? They know it. Why are they not saying it? I have gone to Union Theological Seminary and spoken with those scholars. And they say, oh, we've been teaching this for years. And I said to them, in the eyeballs, I looked in the eyeballs and I said, why is it that none of, the, none of the seminarians are teaching it in church? And they said it would be too difficult for the people to understand. Listen, family, 
this story has been settled. By the way, the New American Bible actually puts this in, in its notes. It says, the Egyptian instructions of Amenemope was discovered in 1923. Scholars immediately recognize it as a source of Proverbs 22, 17 to 23, 11. The Egyptian work has 30 chapters. It preface resembles, its preface resembles. Its first two admonitions match the first two in Proverbs. There are many other resemblances as well, some of which are pointed out in the notes. Now the New American Bible says, this is the origin. And I bet ain't none of y'all have a New American Bible in your house. None of you. By the way, the New American Bible is a Catholic Bible. Y'all talk a lot about the Catholics, but they might be a little less confused than you. They all Y'all all confused, but they might be a little less confused than you. <laughs> Let's continue. This is hypocrisy, family, because then after stealing these texts, stealing these ideas, stealing these characters, stealing these archetypes, then they say in Leviticus 18, 1 to 5, and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the things of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. In other words, don't follow anything that they're saying. By the way, I'm telling you what they're saying. I'm just not saying where it's from. Don't follow them. They're demons. They're evil. Destroy their altars. By the way, I just gave you what they said. I'm just not telling you where it's from. Y'all know what we're seeing here. What are we arguing? What are we arguing? Is it that you just don't want to see? I would think that particularly if African people of African descent would look at this and then say, this gives me ownership of the tradition. Instead, they want to crawl back into the Bible that was given to them when they were whipped off the slave ships. What is wrong with y'all African? What's wrong with you? I'm not going to even go into the Shabaka Stone. I just want you to know that the Shabaka Stone, scholars have argued for a long time that it is an influence on creation in the uh, concept of creation in Genesis. I just took these quotes from Bible.org, you know, an Afrocentric source that doesn't like Christianity. No, I took it from Bible.org, where they acknowledge that there is influence from the Shabaka Stone, sometimes called Menphite theology, in the creation story in Genesis. And let's not even talk about Psalm 104 to the hymn to Aten. Psalm 104. Look at the similarities between the hymn to Aten and Psalm 104. Soul, the hymn to Aten. Soul netter, beside whom there is none in, in Psalms. Yahweh, my God, you are very great. Then, how many are your deeds? You made the earth as you wished, you alone, all peoples, all herds, all flocks. Then, Yahweh, how manifold are your works in wisdom? You have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Aten. When you set in western light land, the earth is in darkness as if in death. Psalm 104, you make darkness and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. Over and over and over again. I'm not going to talk about the lions. And Listen, the person who wrote this and then put Yahweh in there. And then stuck Yahweh in there. Damn. This is theft. This is a crime. If they did this today and him to Aten was copywritten and then Psalm 104 was published, they would be in court and they would lose. They even put Yahweh in there. You got to go. You didn't just copy something. You stuck in Yahweh because you're trying to hide. This is theft. This is theft. And we could even talk briefly about Coptic Christianity's influence in Christianity. Here go um, uh, 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 present day, um, the present day hierarchy in the, um, the Egyptian, I'm gonna say Egyptian intentionally here now, the Egyptian Coptic church. 
What about their influences? Did you know that early Coptic Christians used the Ankh instead of the cross? Oh, wow. Did Dang. you know Mari? You going in. Did you know that? No, man. See, Garfield, I think Garfield know that. That's why he ain't show up. He knows that. <laughs> That's why he ain't show up. God damn, you killing this shit. By the way, the book on the left is called the Codex Glazier. It is one, it is an early version of the New Testament. Man, and Garfield ass was bodied a long time ago. You I'm killing gonna, it, Jabari, at man. The back of this New Testament version, there is an onk on the back page. This mm. is the Codex Glazier. Look at the, the rampant uses of onks. I know they're a little misformed because just like the Christian tradition isn't exactly the comedic tradition, their use of the onk is a bit misformed. That's what's happening here. It's a poor copy. A copy to a tradition that you created, African, and you are arguing that you want to stay in the house of people who forced you to read their version of your tradition. You're imitating the imitator who is imitating you, and you feel good about it. Right, right. Let's go further. How about the story of St. George and the Dragon? I know as I was a child, I heard this story all the time. But did you know that it comes directly from ancient Kemet? No, nah, they the, don't know that. Look at this uh, image of Heru. He's supposed to be holding a spear. Of course, the spear is missing. This is an ancient um, uh, copper statue. So the spear is missing. But you can see it elsewhere. Can you see Heru spearing? How about here? By the way, this is in the temple known as Buto today. And you can see um, uh, uh, Heru at the top. Look at how damaged it is. That was intentional. Mm, mm, mm. They were hiding their theft. They were hiding their theft. You can see Heru here spearing a hippo, which in this instance is supposed to be an image of Set, his, his uncle who he does battle with. Well, let me say to you, when the Coptic Christians then get this image of Heru, during the Roman period in the fourth century, they then put Heru and his spear on the back of a horse and he's wearing Roman clothing. Look at that, look at that. Bearing an alligator. Woo! God damn, Jabari, you going all in on this one. Here's a close-up. Clearly, a... Clearly a falcon. This is now in the Louvre. I wish I had the picture of me standing next to it. So Reggie said this ain't thievery, huh? I don't know what he thinks thievery is. Well, you killing this shit, Jabari. Let's go further really quickly. Here goes the images of St. George. Notice that he's also spearing a water animal. Now it's a dragon. It's not an alligator. It's not a hippo, but it's another um, water um, uh, animal. And this is St. George slaying the dragon. You're going to see this everywhere. I took two of those pictures myself. One of those pictures, I'm sorry, myself from the Metropolitan Museum. Look at that. This is what this is, the, how this transitions. Now, let me be clear. St. George lived maybe in the fourth century, right? But the story of him riding a horse and sparing a dragon is at earliest from the 11th century of the Common Era. So St. George may or may not have been a literal person, but the story that we are familiar with ain't placed on him for seven, 800 years. And that story is an echo of the story of Heru. That's what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing. Mm, mm, mm. By the way, in one of the versions of the story, they tell you that it occurs in Syene, which is another name for a region of Nubia. But they never show you any Nubians. They're all Tom who, European looking people, and it's supposed to be in Syene. They just think you don't know where Syene is. This is an echo in the Christian tradition. Somebody's gonna say, well, this is not in the Bible. Are you telling me that everything that is Christianity is in the Bible? Please, please. 
So the, the Ethiopians also enjoy St. George. Take a look at them fighting the Battle of Ajua and St. George is assisting them in the top. That's St. George up there with his spear. Hmm. And in fact, here's another close-up of it. He got a little afro. He's spearing a dragon. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And their best, their best stone carved church. Here's St. George again. There's the dragon again. Yep. Best stone carved church is Bet St. George's. It is a church that was carved in honor of St. George in the 11th century. In the 11th century. And you know that doing the research means you got to go see them. Mm -hmm. Doing the research means you got to go see them and study <laughs> these things. Mm -hmm. I know I look younger. I know Anika looks younger. Stop it. I got old. So are you. <laughs> But this is the study that we must do to uncover the legacies of African people. That's what we're doing. Finally, let's talk about the Christian destruction of the comedic tradition. And we're going to close there. Yeah. That's the third part of this model. The third leg of the stool. Reggie, come in. If you're ready to get this questions, come in so you can yeah. be one of the first and second. Let him, let him come in a little while, because you can still see him. Let me just finish this, okay? Go ahead, go ahead. You're going to see that the Christians, after taking liberally, and after describing that their tradition was primary, and that those people who were practicing the earlier traditions were demons, demon-inspired, pagans, then they destroy the old stuff. Here's an image of a saint pulling down the statue. This oh, is man. This is supposed to be a Greek statue they're pulling down. This is what they did. But this comes. Now, let me just say this. In, in a way, I've been told, at least I learned that God was a God of love. If they were following a God of love, and these people also had a recent history of persecution where um, the, the, the powers of the day were harming them. By the way, that has been overblown. But it, it happened maybe for about 13 years out of the 300 years until um, uh, uh, Constantine. That's overblown. They, they talk about their, their persecution and they use it propagandistically. But I want you to know that if they had this idea that they had been harmed by people, and then they said that their God was a God of love, how is it that they are so comfortable destroying and burning and killing? That same Bible tells you that. Here goes KJV, Deuteronomy 12, 3 and 4. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the gods ye shall possess, serve their gods. Upon the high mountains, upon the hills, under every tree, ye shall overthrow their altars, break their pillars, burn their groves with fire, and ye shall shoon down the graven images of their god, destroy the names of them out of that place. Destroy the names of them out of that place. Destroy the names of them out of that place. It is a Bible itself that has led, that has led to this destruction, that has led to this thievery, that has led to this ancient identity theft. Constantine is one of the major ones that leads to it. He issues the Edict of Milan. By the way, Constantine is still a, a, a saint in several versions of the Christian church today, a, a man that boils his wife to death, that kills his son because he thinks his son is sleeping with his wife, kills his best friend, Sopater. Then he issues the Edict of Milan that says, well, everyone should be able to um, uh, uh, worship. So Christians, don't leave the Christians alone. Let them worship. But in actuality, what he does is he paints, he pays, um, actually passes a law that says, that idolatry and divination are out of the uh, are, are no longer legal. And eventually his son even says sacrifices, which were common in the traditions of the day, are, are illegal as well. He convenes the Nicene Council, as you know, <laughs> to codify Christianity. Cube, stop, man. <laughs> stop, Cube. Go ahead, Jabari. I'm sorry, man. Um Cube funny. Look what Cube said, Jabari. Cube, you gotta stop. I didn't see. What did he say? Oh, no. Stop it. Stop Come it. Come on, Cube, man. <laughs> you know, he's starting trouble. Yeah. Um, 
uh, later after Constantine, we see Theodosius. Theodosius is the one that really puts the nail in the coffin of the Kemetic tradition and other quote unquote pagan traditions. He was a zealous Christian and he begins strict prohibition on pagan ideas and steals from them. Listen to what, and this is an excellent book. I keep telling y'all, y'all listen, if you really wanna argue with me, read what I'm reading. Read what I'm reading. The Darkening Age by Catherine Nixie is an excellent book. Read it. And then you'll see where some of my ideas come from. This is a newer book. But I'm telling you, by the way, you should also get, this book is a little expensive, Making and Breaking of the God, Breaking the Gods. This one deals a lot with what happened in Kemet. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, I'm telling you, I mean, uh, the amount of money I end up spending on books is astronomical, but it's because I'm trying to do the work. Listen to what she says. She said, Christian writers applauded such destruction and egged their rulers on to greater acts of violence. One gleefully observed that the Christian emperors now spit in the faces of dead idols, trample on the lawlessness rights of demons, demons, and laugh at the old lies. Notice they even mention that they're old, the old lies. And Infamex early text instructed emperors to wash away this filth and take away, calmly take away the adornments of the temple. Let the fires of the mint or the blaze of smelters melt them down. In other words, we're going to take the gold and the silver and steal it. That's what that means. That's what that means. That's what they're saying. Libanius, the Greek orator for Antioch, orator for Antioch wrote, these people hasten to attack the temples, demolitions, de demolition of walls, the tearing down of statues, and the priest must either keep quiet or die. Mm. This is what the early Christian tradition did. And then in 391, Theodosian would pass the Theodosian decree that would close all of the temples. That's what he ISIS claimed. By the way, when you look at the destruction of ancient things, today people look at ISIS and they take issue with it. But you have to understand ISIS of the older world were the Christians. Take a quick look at this um, news report. This morning, ISIS claims to have destroyed priceless pieces of history. A video posted yesterday shows people taking power tools and sledgehammers to irreplaceable statutes and artifacts in Iraq. One piece may they back, back all the way to 700 BC. Close Ward is in London with why the extremists say it had to be done. I just want you to know that's exactly what the Christians did. We look at these uh, ISIS members today and we say, oh my goodness, they're, they're, they're heathens. They're, they're um, people that actually don't understand that they must embrace the ancient world. That's exactly what the Christians did. Precisely what they did. Look at some of these. Look at the crosses carved into them. Now, these are not comedic people, comedic images. You have, the, you have the bust of the goddess Athena. You have the bust of Germanicus, the bust of Augustus. Look at the crosses. Look at how they destroyed the noses. By the way, often when I am leading people on tours and they say, why are all the noses destroyed? Sometimes I think it might have been the early Christians that did it. But you have to also understand that there's some things that are now just completely missing. Listen to Nath Nixie again. She says, but while some evidence remains, much has gone entirely. The point of destruction is, after all, it is that it destroys. If effective, it will more than merely deface something. It more than merely defaces something. It obliterates all evidence that the object ever existed. We will never know um, quite how much was wiped out. Many statues were pulverized, shattered, um, scattered, burned, and melted into absence. This is the kind of thing that we know the early Christians did. By the way, this comes to us from Adolf Ehrman. By the way, Reggie, I don't know how you don't know who Adolf Ehrman is. I have no idea. I've been telling Reggie for years that you can know the language, but that doesn't mean you study the history. Any person who has studied comedic history must know that Adolf Ehrman is probably top three Egyptologists. Some people would say he's number one. For you to tell our elder scholar, Walter Williams, you don't know who A. Wolf Arman was, was a big tell. That you ain't reading history. 
What does he say? He says, if these sanctuaries of Ra existed without a special cultist status, statue, because the obelisk was revered as a dwelling place of the god, according to Egyptian ideas, this in and of itself would was a strange departure from accepted custom. For in every other cult, the statue of the god was the most important object in the temple. He's, uh, let me skip down. He says, um, all seem to have fallen victim to the hatred of the Christians at the downfall of the Egyptian religion. That's what Adolf Ehrman says. By the way, he's a, a scholar that's still alive. He's very old, but he's still alive. No, no, not Adolf Ehrman. There's another scholar. Jan Osman is still alive. Adolf Ehrman died. So how about the Serapium? Now, this is actually um, Kemet under its Greek and Roman um, rulers. But many of the objects that existed in Kemet that were older were brought into these spaces. And this was the version of the Kemetic tradition that existed. I disagree with it. I would actually argue that you should follow an older version. But look at how they were destroyed. I just want you to know that this space also had 19 rooms and more of tens of thousands of volumes of books. And then... 392, right after 391, when Theodosian signed a decree, Bishop Theophilus takes a Christian mob to loot and destroy the entire temple. Mm, mm, mm. This is how it looks now. This is a Christian bishop that destroys it. You shouldn't be surprised. Later on, Pope St. Gregory says, if those temples are well bit, built, it is it is requisite that they be converted from the worship of devils to the service of the true God. They were rampant destroyers, rampant destroyers. And in fact, before the Serapium was destroyed, we see this woman who was likely biracial, by the way, this woman known as Hypatia, sometimes called Hypatia, killed by early Christians. Killed by, she was a mathematician, an astronomer, a Neoplatonist, lived in Alexandria. Um, we see that um, they told her that a woman should not be teaching. She refused. They came into the place where she taught. They grabbed her. They stoned her. And then they used seashells to carve all of the flesh from her skin and paraded her bones and her remains through the city. Why this terrorism? It reminds me a little bit about Alberta King, a little bit. Alberta King. We're not even going there yet. We got to say <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. In the ancient world, and, and even in the Western world, they talk a lot about Hypatia, but I'm sure some of you have never even heard of her. This is an image that's supposed to be her stoning at the hands of the early Christians. I'm going to go through this very quickly. What about a pet reset known as the Temple of Luxor? When you go to the Temple of Luxor, you're going to see that early Christians plastered over things and painted their own image. You're going to even see on the bottom um, right, you're going to see that there's literally a mosque that was built on top of it. And that's where it is still, it's still operating, by the way. The Mosque of Abu Haggag. Still there. This is what they did on top of these sacred comedic sites. This is destruction. The Temple of Pilak, also known as Philae. This is all the way down in Kemetic Nubia. This is how we see more destruction of early Christians. I want you to get the context. Brother Sharif has done a lot of the heavy lifting, so I can just give you context. So I, to, I can really describe this very well. I want you to recognize that this space is the space where we begin to see African civilization truly become um, fragmented, right? So you see the original temple, this is built by a native ruler. His comedic name would have been Nacht Neb F. The Greeks called him Nectanebo, right? That's the first temple, but underneath there, we would have seen a temple built by Taharka, the Nubian ruler. And you might say, well, why does a Nubian build here? Why do we see such Nubians here? This island, in many ways, was the, the, the communication point between sub-Saharan Africa and the Mediterranean. And that's one of the reasons why this region remains so important. So we see a Nubian ruler build the first temple here. Then we see a native ruler, Nakhnebeth, build another temple here. 
Now, this stuff is built by the Greeks, right? Mm. By local people, according to local standards, with Kemetic ideology, but we see it built under Ptolemy 2, 5, and 7. Mm. It is a really important place to study the, the work, the worship, the concept of the great mother Ost. But what we will see is a large amount of, of desecration by the early Christians, later the Arabs. When you see it, it is it, unimaginable. Unimaginable. You have to go to these spaces to do the research and to tell the story. That was just last summer, August of 2022. Notice I'm wearing the same shirt in the picture. <laughs> it's not just because I wear the same clothes all the time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but you can see the destruction. In fact, hey, hey, try to try to end it, Jabari, so we can get out of here. This is like you know we got people that want to come in. Less than three minutes. All right. Look at if you look on the right, you're gonna see the number of chisel marks on the image of Os. You know how hard that takes to how hard that is. That's how much they tried to destroy the image of us. Can you see that? Catherine Nixie again. Nevertheless, we've written, uh, 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 written sources are silent. Archaeology can speak volumes. In Egypt, countless chisel blows neatly deface the images of the gods of while, while the Dendera, in Dendera. Divine figures were hacked with tiny hack marks, usually several hundred for each figure. The archaeologist Eberhard Saucer, a specialist in the archaeology of religious hatred, has observed that the closeness of these cults, the these cuts, the irregularity hinted at blows made with almost frenetic rapidity. Look at how hard it is for you to try to erase the tradition. They attempted to destroy it. So finally, you have seen my savior's model. I, we went through three of those pieces. <laughs> things went into Christianity were taken, stolen into Christianity. We heard the early Christians in their veiled confessions tell you without trying to tell you where they, that they stole and where they got it from. And then finally, we see that they attempted to destroy the source. Let us be clear. The case is theft. The case is plagiarism. The case is stealing. What All right, family. So y'all already know what it is, man. Wait, and still, wait, wait. you gotta see this, Sonetta. Wait, wait, wait. Look, three minutes. Look, look, look. Someone else knew this. He says the Egyptian mysteries of Osi Isis and Osiris um, exerted considerable influence upon early Christianity. Who was the person that made that wrote this paper? Some of you have made, seen me say this on Sonetta before. Martin Luther King understood I, the argument. I was just getting ready to say that. I was just getting ready to say it too. Martin Luther King understood the argument I'm making. He wrote this in his paper where he got his um, his reverendship. Yeah, his reverendship. Come on. Let's be clear. What must you do? They stole it. You must reclaim it. With that family, um, you've seen the overwhelming majority of the argument that I was going to make. And I'm really hoping that you are prepared um, to have a really good discussion around it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Everybody go on mute, please. I want to say this one time. I don't want to go crazy when talk only when being talked to. When I say stop, you got to stop. Otherwise, I'll put you in the back. I do not. I don't want to put nobody in the background. Only talk when it's time for you to talk. And still, the heavyweight champion of the world. Jabari Osazi. Yo, man, this was great, Jabari. You killed it. Hey, yo, hey, they can say what they want now. Now they're going to look at your information, put something together, and try to say, oh, look, this was pseudo. But see, you got you can't do that after the debate. It's, it's y'all crazy if you try to do that. Some Negro Cedric, Cedric is losing his goddamn mind. That nigga crazy. You know, they all talking this crazy stuff now, but they man, they main man didn't show up. And so, Brother Jabari, you, I want to let it be known that you have defeated the Arm and Raw squad. You have defeated the Reggie Raj, the Dr. Reggie Noodle, Noodle squad or whatever you call it. You done defeated all of them dudes that was back in Garfield, the Cedric, 
the Cedric drunken man, the drunken monk. Look, look, nigga, you defeated all of them. I want to say I'm proud of you, brother Jabari. This is why we call you the Floyd Mayweather of consciousness. This is why Garfield knew better than to show up. And so what I want to do right now is I want to pass the mic to my brother, Shaka. Shaka, what's going on? You was here first, brother. What's happening? Thank you, brother Saneta. Congratulations to you, brother Jabari Osase. I'm proud of you as well. Now, Saneta, I'm sorry that you had to go through this with some uh, yes. uh, Hello you, Kitty, man. Hello um, Kitty energy from some female cats. And there's a saying that goes, "It's only so long fake ones can pretend." Rabon has been saying Kemet is dead for a long time. Well, I can say rest in peace to the Daga squad. The Daga squad is officially dead. And I hope that the savior of the Christian apologies will resurrect soon in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Yes, yes. Go ahead, brother. That's it. Okay, we're going to go around. Let me get apostle, apostle. This is not a time for you to teach. You can ask questions on the topic, on what Jabari spoke about. You can ask questions. All right, go ahead, Apostle. We already had the teacher here today. You can ask questions. Unmute yourself, Apostle. You're muted. I don't want to teach. I just want to smash what he said. That's all. No, no, no. You can ask questions, brother. <laughs> We're not doing that, brother. Because, I, hold up. Listen to me. Because I've asked you many times if you wanted to debate. You always say no. So, brother, you can't wait until we put up information. And now, you because you see it, you want to come in and smash. That's not how it works, brother. Either you get your little scary ass in the ring. I love you. You my elder, too. I love you, brother. Or you just fall back. Fall back. That's all. If you want to get in the ring or come in and we can have a discussion with me, you and Jabari sometime in the future, you can do that. But this ain't the time to come in and try to smash. That's Garfield part. He chose to fall back. You can't step in Garfield's shoes right now. You're a Hebrew. Is there a question, though, that you would like to ask? Uh, yeah, I'd like to ask a question about that first thing that he presented about the guy that said, that made the statement that he, um, your religious scholar that you showed, and in the statement, he made that statement about how he, how how was? Could you put that back up there? Sure, give me, give me a minute. Give me a sec. I'll put it up for you. Yeah, put that up there for me. That's all. Oh, the stream, the stream was already shared. You know. Uh, you know, my, my question going to come in about Catholicism because I think your argument is about Catholicism and not Christianity. So I just want to point you in the right direction. Here's, here's the point. Here's the part. But I just want to let's look at that. Uh, on that, you put it up so he can. Yeah, I want to. Can you make it just a little bit bigger? No. So I can read it. Thank you. That's big enough. Okay. I have taken it for granted. Everybody go on mute until it's your turn to speak. I have taken it for granted that Jesus of Nazareth existed. Okay, he's saying what he took for granted. Some writers feel need to justify this assumption at length against the people that try time from time to deny it. It would be easier, frankly, to believe that Tiberius of Caesar Jesus' contemporary was a figment of imagination to believe that there never was a Jesus person or person as they describe this word Jesus, which I don't believe in. So is he not saying that it would be easier to deny the Tiberius Caesar, who we know exists, than to say that Christ never existed? Yes. 
even though he took it for granted. You highlighted, you see, he took Jesus for granted. Like he did something wrong. No, he's saying, but he corrected it. At one time, he did take it for granted. We all took it for granted at one time. Because we all came to this measure by believing, by faith. But God is justified in proving his existence. So what I want to say is that when it comes to the Bible, like you pointed about Star Wars, and then the other thing that Mel Brooks did. Brother, do you have a question? Yes, because see, I want to get to your core of okay. what plagiarism is. Because in plagiarism- He already is, showed the definition of plagiarism, brother. He showed tight. it. I didn't see it, but hold tight. For those that didn't see it. You're about to make a fool I'm of yourself, but go ahead. Question, is plagiarism- You might want to get that again, Jabari, just to show them. plagiarism, do you not have to also show an injured party that has to complain and the party- that presented the assault. Well, we're getting ready to bust your nugget because we're going to show you what plagiarism no, 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 is. No, 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 I'm not asking you this question. I'm asking Jabari the question. Because, see, you just can't say Mel Brooks plagiarized Star Wars. No, you got to say Mel Brooks plagiarized the author. Okay, I'm finished so we can go so on. You got to, so Let you me... got to present. The author okay. of Star Wars. Okay, now so just listen. Can, just listen. So let if me... you can present the author of what Okay, let's see if you're right. And then we're oh, going to no. see if you're going to say, oh, damn, my no. bad. You're cutting uh, uh, Hold on, Apostle. He, he, he said we heard the question, family. Just, let's just let him, just let him, okay. yeah, let him get okay. it in. No, no. We have not what? heard the... It, it. Okay, go ahead, man. First of I'm all, sorry. I want you to see that uh, this is plagiarizing, right? Plagiarizing is to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as, as one's own, to use another production without crediting the source. Um, and I, I wanted to give you what plagiarizing is because plagiarizing is another form of stealing. I knew that if I did not describe plagiarizing, someone would actually try to say, well, Jabari said it was stolen. It's actually better as plagiarized. Plagiarizing is a type of stealing. So that's really what you have to understand. There's nothing here that says you have to actually say who's the author and all of this stuff. Right. I what did, the hell are you talking about? I did you not do. say that. Say the Bible. Did, wait, brother. I did not say that um, Spaceballs plagiarized Star Wars. It was a parody of Star Wars. Everyone, but the reason why I described um, uh, Spaceballs is because even though those stories are not the same, we can recognize the origin. The other thing you have to recognize is when we look at the comedic tradition, it is clear where it was stolen from. And if you really want to go and say to use a higher standard, the one that you seem to suggest, then you would have to agree that the Bible plagiarizes the Menomope and that the Bible uh, uh, plagiarizes Akhenaten and that the Bible plagiarizes Shabaka because these are names of people who wrote things that were stolen and taken into the Bible without sources. So even if you wanted to use your ridiculously high standard, your argument would still fall on those. On those. No, no, Jack, no. You know why, Jabari? Because you would have to name me the person that wrote the Bible in order to choose their Bible. The Bible isn't responsible for what it says. Somebody put the book together. Now, if it's one person that did that, yes, you can identify that person. Any right. more, you can't identify the person that right. did this any more than you can identify the person Brother. on the walls. Okay, because so, on the walls, so, even though it might attribute okay. a name, okay. nobody was there so, to witness him write it. Nobody all right, all right, there. Apostle. Okay, okay, okay. Let's say this, for example. For many, many years, and I know you've heard this as well. You probably also say it as well. For many years, people argued that Solomon was the author of Proverbs. So if you believe that Solomon is the author of Proverbs, then you're saying that he is the plagiarizer. But I, no, nothing in here says that you have to cite the person who actually stole it. I'm telling you that the Bible has stolen it. 
you are creating your own definition for plagiarism as you think it suits you. Honestly, I don't even think it suits you, but that's what you're attempting to do. The reality is you should say that the Bible is a work that plagiarizes comedic text. Can you say that? Yeah, we can. No, I'm asking. I'm no, asking you're about, asking me. Of course no, you. I cannot say the Bible <laughs> did it because I cannot single out the original person okay. that wrote the Bible. That's not right. The Bible that's is not, not written that's by not, one that's not person. A that's necessary. The Bible is that's a collection a of 42. All books. right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I would just say this, um, Jabari, and move on. Yeah. Being that he gives the credit to one source, God damn it, I would say God plagiarized the Bible then. Because he's responsible for appointing all the men to write it. So God did it. God damn it. Your God plagiarized the Bible. We're moving on. We're moving on. Brother Reggie, it's on you, brother. We can only charge one person for it. So that's what Apostle's saying. So being that God is responsible for appointing all of these men to write the damn Bible, God ass is guilty for plagiarizing. For Sanada, plagiarism. Sanada, yeah, hey, brother Reggie. Let me say this very quickly. It's going to be very short. Uh, this is the reason why I spent so much time giving you the definitions, because I knew that they were going to try to create definitions that... Right. They, they do that all the time. Yes. Okay. Brother Reggie, you're on the call. Uh, uh, that I'm not going to be able to uh, present anything, but maybe... There might be an entryway to it. First, um, my brother Garfield has uh, had exceptionally bad luck during this season, and um, and it's cost him not to appear on this debate. But I am so sure that brother Garfield, uh, his first century expertise on Christianity would have rebuttaled uh, most of what. Um, um, Brother Jabari said tonight. I, um, so what I will say... Yes, we'll never know. Right. We're, we're, well, you rolling we, with him, so you're supposed to say that, we brother. May, we may never, we will may never know on one part, but um, Brother Jabari Osase, as someone who studies ancient Egyptian culture and also reads the text, right? And I'm not saying it, you don't read the text. There's different ways you can read the text. You can read it in English, and you can read it uh, in the Meta Natural, and you can verify it. Um, Brother Sase, you did the community a great disservice um, by going to the coffin text to find if a set was a virgin or not, then, then instead of going to the pyramid text. And it would just take me uh, three, um, three minutes just to show you in the pyramid text no, we sir. Not. You're not here to teach. We we're asked right. you to debate. You we're didn't right. want to debate yeah. either. No, and so if you want to have a discussion, we can set that up in the future. Okay, so but for right fine. now, so right we, now, you can ask a question, brother. Okay, but we are, so, you're not here to present a presentation. So a couple Your of boy three. ducked out on you. He ran out. He threw you under okay. the bus. I understand. But you got to give me at least enough time that you gave the Hebrew. What you mean? I'll give you enough time to talk and ask a question. Right. But ain't no presenting no presentation, brother. I, I know you stopped me there. So I just want okay. to. Yeah, like, go ahead. You can talk. Go ahead, brother. I love you, but go ahead no, and talk. No, no, son. I know you do. Me, this is not about this. This is about the truth. Go ahead. Brother Jabari, in the pyramid text, is there a section where a, um, um, a, um, a set sits on um a phallus of a seer and his sperm leaks into her is there a text in the pyramid text where the phallus is penetrated like sate right and then gives birth to horus and horus comes out like a sate is 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 there a text that you have read because if you didn't read that text you did a disservice to the whole tradition Yes or no? Yes Before or no. Jabari goes on, what's sad to me, Reggie, is you have the audacity to come up in here and talk about Jabari doing a disservice when your man ducked out the goddamn back door. Right there, you should have came in and said, congratulations, Jabari. How long are you going to hate? 
You should say congratulations, brother Jabari. My brother have done a disservice to the people who came in and paid their money to see a debate. But instead of doing that, you say Jabari did a disservice. No, Jabari no. is here. He's here, call, brother. You won't let me talk. On the phone call that I talked to you earlier, I said because he did not uh, debate, right? Because of his circumstances, it was the facto win for Brother Jabari. I did say that earlier. I didn't think I had to repeat myself. But to Mr. Osaze, who is supposed to be an expert on Kemet tradition, is in the pyramid text a section where a set sits on the penis. Oh, no. The penis leaks the semen in. And is there a section where that penis penetrates like Sapta? And you Hebrew, don't you ever say anything to any of us because you're responsible for the death of Martin Luther King's mother, you Hebrew Israelites. And you have never come on this platform and say anything about that. This is not your day, right? I'm just asking my brother, Jabari Osase, did you miss the pyramid text on virginity? Because if that text is in there and we can have discussion tomorrow, the day after, and I can show the primaries. Did you miss that or may have you missed it? And All right, I'll, go ahead, Jabari. Wait, I think there's something we need to recognize. First of all, there are apologists that look in text and say, if this happened, then she could not be a virgin, right? That's the first thing that they're going to do. Let me speak specifically to the pyramid text and then to the larger argument that is that is actually a very poor argument. And I hope that Reggie was able to see it. The first part is there are texts where Ast recreates the Henanum. No, I don't have it here. I was looking to see if I could put it on the screen. But um, there are some texts where... Um, uh, 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 actually, Ast recreates the Henanen, the, the penis of Asar, and then takes in his seed. There are some pieces like that. There are even images of her turning into a kite or a falcon or bird to receive his seed. And very often people say that that means that she cannot be a virgin. Two things. First of all, this is not a literal creation, right? There are many, many different stories. Number two, we have to recognize that if Asar is dead and she's recreated something, we're still not talking about a sexual act. It explains very clearly that Asar is a soul, a spirit, in, in so many of the different texts that we'll read. And then let us let me explain it uh, an, another way. It doesn't actually matter whether you think that the story is um, described as a virgin. Only the only thing that matters is if the comedic people believe that she was a virgin and described her that way to the world. You could disagree with them on whether you think you're hearing a story of virginity or not. But the reality is when they describe the entire story to the world in Corey Cosmo, they described her as a virgin. When they also depicted Ost and Inbedhet in grand dramas where they played out these dramas, in a manner that everyone who couldn't even read would be seeing what they did. They always cast virgins. So the reality is the comedic people argued she was a virgin and the rest of the world understood her to be. I, I, I think that it's really reductionist for us to argue, was there a penis present or all those, those other things? The reality is that even in the story, we're talking about a recreated item done out of spirit. Can we set it up, God Can we set up this conversation? I want to show the people the primary text and show once and for all that he has not read the text. And I'm going to show what the comment, the, the people take on, take on Chris Harris, Reggie. Can we set it up? Let me very clearly say to you that you're saying I haven't read the text. There are several texts. You're acting like the coffin text is somehow invalid. You're the acting pyramid like text makes it your attack is first. Yeah. Can we just set it up or not? That's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. We're going to set it up, but not just for that. For everything. We're no, going to no, get no, everything. No. I can't do everything because I'm not an expert. But Let I want to show, show that Mr. Osaze 
Gar- did Gar- not read the pyramid Gar- text Gar- and he is spinning it. Reggie. All right, thank you, Reggie. We're so, gonna move on. Uh, we got Chris Harris in the building. Chris is on you, brother. Uh, first of all, I want to say, I want to say, let me say this really quickly. I have sections of the pyramid text in my presentation. I don't know why he's asserting this. He can argue about whether he thinks that there's a real penis or a fake penis or a spiritual penis or whatever. The reality is, the comedic people described her as a, a virgin, and they that's right. Uh, that's, that's the answer. No, no, Reggie, Reggie, hold on, hold on, Reggie. It's on Chris. Go ahead, Chris. All right. Um, you got a channel, Reggie. Do your show, brother. All right. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to say congratulations to Jabari um on a victory here. And just as much as I think that people need to be celebrating Jabari on this channel, a brother who has graduated from Cornell University. A brother has always promoted himself or presented himself um, debating under the DUI influence, which I call decorum, understanding, and intelligence. I think he doesn't get enough roses over here, and I want to give him some today. And I think it's very disingenuous what Reggie just did. That is a clear moving the goalpost fallacy. Mm. I think what Reggie is doing and what Garfield and everybody tends to do, they want to teach Chris. (laughs) What's up, Jeremiah? There's there are people, what he's trying to do is pigeonhole Jabari into one text. The Egyptians had many different cosmologies concerning Asar, Ptah, Haru. They had Set. They had many different cosmologies. There was no just one primary cosmology that they believed in. There were many different facets. You have the pyramid text, coffin text, um, the Pert M. Heru. You have uh, the Paparissa who never, which all explain the afterlife or the Netaru in different um, in different forms and um, how they uh, reacted in various t- how they reacted and how they moved at various times and periods of the kingdom. Um, I think that needs to be understood, and I think he's being disingenuous. That was a clear moving the goalpost. He's ignoring all the evidence that Jabari showed, and he's um, he's um, asking for more evidence. Another thing I want to um, say is this was a clear debate, and I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers here. Me and Jabari spoke about this, and I knew this was going to happen. This was not Jabari versus, versus Garfield. This was Jabari versus those who hate Jabari. Mm, and I get it. needs to be said. All right. Just as well as me and JJ7000 pieced our little beef out today on our platform, and we shook hands. Yes, we did. I think people need to sit back and begin to start debating with some decorum, understanding, and intelligence. And I see Pastor Bennett down there. He's sort of like (laughs) looking around. That's why I said I never put you up there. And if I've said anything to offend you, I apologize moving forward because of the energy that I brought to you and vice versa. I think we need to change that. But it's not fair to Jabari. It's not fair to Jabari today. And it's definitely not fair to the platform, and it's not fair to the listener audience. Ankh, Reggie, and others who dislike Jabari because of his decorum and intelligence and his stance on certain or his stance or on academia, I think it's unfair and it's unfair to the audience. And I have to sit up there and draw my line in the sand. It's not fair, Reggie, what you're on here doing. And it makes you look like a big crybaby. I- I'm sorry, I have to say that now. So I do want to say congratulations to Jabari. Um, I knew this was going to happen. Everybody I spoke to, I said that he would not show up to this. And this is not a slander on Garfield. Mm. I'm not trying you to You said this. that, Chris? Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to show up. Because wow. they were supposed to debate, debate what, a year ago? And we've never seen it. We never saw that debate. So we got to stop with the disingenuous scholarship on this channel. And let's get to the bottom line. Was mm. Christianity plagiarized? Yes, it was. There are what Jabari showed in his presentation were clear archetypes that are present in the African Egypt or just African culture. Period. You can find it in Mesopotamian culture. You can find it in um, other Greek culture. You can find these concepts in cultures that predate the Hebrew religion. You can find it. You know, um, I, I just saw somebody put a put a real Israelite scholar on here. What in the hell is an Israelite scholar? Just, just show me that. What is an Israelite scholar? Somebody who teaches about a group of people who never existed? Are we serious here? 
and I need everybody. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. But I just need everybody to be a little bit serious here. I asked uh, Garfield yesterday, and I asked it for a reason. I said, "Why are you telling Tori it's okay mm. to believe whatever he wants to believe, and you teach that Jesus is real?" Right. Mm. And he said he didn't want to answer that. I knew right then and there he wasn't ready for this debate coming up. He was not ready. So congratulations to a very intelligent brother that has always presented himself with the utmost respect on this channel. And I look forward to working with him again and more on this channel. And Sarnetta, into the audience, I'm sorry that you guys weren't able to see this debate. It should have been shown. And since they did me this way, I'm going to say this this time. Everybody has a bad day, but uh, Garfield, you need to be banned from Chinatown <laughs> TV. You need to be kicked <laughs> off for about six months from Chinatown TV. Hold on, you're a runner, you're a track star. You didn't even show up. At least I showed up. To oh, the that's dead. <laughs> all right, you'll be all right though. Can I just ain't on Jabari's level. So with that being said, Chris told me that he wasn't going to show up. Oh, wow. Damn. So Chris <laughs> just prophesied. He prophesied. Yeah, I'm not, Elijah, no. baby. I said it too, y'all. Yeah, I forgot. I now, said it too. Now, yes, yes. JJ said it too. That's true. Yeah. Both, mm. both of them said it to me. And I said, no, come on. You're crazy. He should be right. allowed back on the channel, side netter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, moving on. Hey, JJ, you are on the call. It's on you, JJ. Yeah, man. Peace and blessings, man. Shout out to the Lions, man. Yeah, uh, you're barring proud of you, man. Uh, like I told you, I chased you. I told you, I said, this guy ain't going to show up, man. I, said, I knew he wasn't going to show up. Mm. And 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 and, and then you let your team down, Garfield. They in the audience, man. They usually speak to me. They 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 looking the other way, act like I ain't even here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, great job, man. That's all I gotta say. That's all right, all let me say. move on. Um, it looked like my brother, man, is is a little disappointed right here, man. I speak of none other than the great scholar, the great representative of. Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Pastor Bennett in the building, whom I love and got great respect for, my brother, Pastor Bennett. You should have been doing this debate, brother. But you're on the call next. Anyway, what's up with you? Unmute yourself and let's get it in. Let's talk about it. Man, I got a lot of, I, I got a lot I was going to say to all the other stuff y'all just seen. I ain't even going to say nothing uh, back to that. But Contra Community, y'all got to come on now. Y'all got to start with all this play. Jabari, uh, good presentation. I disagree with the most of it, but hey, I'm a most of it, Pastor. Yeah. yeah, about what what percentage would you say? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, res I have to respect the fact that Jabari did the presentation. Like, mm. for real, I gotta respect the fact that he did the presentation. So, I don't want to, so I'm just talking informationally. I'm just right. talking that to the debate. I disagree with his position. That's all I'm saying. He gets, well, of props. course, you're a Christian, you're supposed yeah. to. Yeah, he gets props for coming on and doing it, but I think. I think I would say this to Jabari. That will only work here, Jabari. That will only work on this platform. Jabari, the stuff that you brought, bro, that is like laughable. Even when you brought up the, I, Sonetta, I never thought I would do this. And then I'm going to ask my questions and get out the way. I never thought I would do this. But I almost got to agree with um, the apostle. Because <laughs> when he brought up the NT Wright quote, talking about he typically, like, bro, what are you doing? NT Wright is saying, Jesus existed. Why are you bringing Jabari has this thing where he puts up quotes, then makes the quotes say what he wants them to say. Like, I'm trying to think, Jabari, what are you getting out of in right saying he took for granted that Jesus existed? Then went on to say that it's not even a question that Jesus existed. And he's talking about literally. I don't even know what that's about. All right, Jabari, my couple questions to you, man. First question I got. I believe you brought up. If you want, I didn't have a question about this, Jabari, so I don't want you to get distracted. If you want to say something to that, go ahead. You're on mute, Jabari. I can't hear you. Let me say something really quickly. First of all, let me say, N.T. Wright is not a Catholic. Because I I, remember, I didn't get to say that about uh, Till Apostle. He's not Catholic. Um, and I guess he saw a white dude, so he assumed he was Catholic. I don't, I, that's bizarre. The other thing is, 
I'm not saying, I'm not questioning whether N.T. Wright believes that there's a historical price. He's saying he does. But the reality is he is saying he takes it for granted. Here is a biblical scholar taking it for granted. That was the point. It wasn't that I'm saying he's not historical. I think that everyone who's listening was able to hear that. I don't know why you aren't able to get that. My yeah. point is, my point is, so many of the Christians who are making this argument are being dubious and and inappropriate because they're not actually analyzing the data they just want to take it for granted because they're christians that was my point okay and just real quick and to that point it lets me know further that you take people's quote you make it what they want to make it and you misuse it if you i don't know why you took the quote down but if you look at the quote he says i have taken that's past tense that's what he's saying, Jabari. And if you understand who he is, you would understand he doesn't just believe that Jesus existed historically. He believes in the biblical Jesus. He believes in the miracles of Jesus. He believes in the resurrecting the resurrection of Jesus. So it's not what you're saying. He doesn't just believe in the historical Jesus. He believes in the supernatural Jesus. But anyway, let me move on. I didn't say any of that. All right, cool, cool. Let me move on. So I won't <laughs> that. Here's my questions concerning your presentation. Um so I remember in your presentation seeing Deuteronomy, an Old Testament passage, I believe Deuteronomy 12, you pulled up, um, a couple of passages in Proverbs, um, maybe one or so in Psalms. And then I believe for New Testament, I seen you bring up John chapter 14. And I believe I seen you bring up um, a scripture in Matthew, I think. Jabari, my first question to you is, were there any other, did I miss any other passages of New Testament scripture that you brought up in your presentation besides John 14 and Matthew? I, I certainly don't, I don't remember. I mean, I don't have a list of all the scriptures I use. I didn't, I don't think of it that way. So I don't have like a list of scriptures, the Old Testament, New Testament. I, that's that's not something that, that I did. Yeah, no, I'm saying forget the Old Testament. In the New Testament, John chapter 14, you brought up. And I believe you brought up a, uh, a verse in Matthew. Do you remember any in your presentation bringing up any other of the 27 New Testament books in the Bible besides one John chapter 14 and one in Matthew? Do you remember using any other New Testament scripture in your presentation? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I, I didn't write them down that way. So I don't okay. know. Okay. I don't okay. Know. okay. I don't I'm think. What, what the point is. I'm, I'm going to give you the point. I'm going to give you the point. I don't think you did. I'm, I'm showing you how ridiculous your presentation was and how it would only work here. The fact that you can't remember lets me know that you, if you did bring up any, so somebody needs to mute. Everybody right. is on mute. All right, cool. That JJ even, got a mute. That I don't think you brought up too many more. And if the debate was, did Christianity steal from Kemet? The fact that you only use two New Testament texts, which Christianity, New Testament is what builds Christianity. You don't get Christianity, right, to the first century. You don't get Christianity to Jesus. And the fact that you are talking about stealing and only brought up two New Testament texts, and in those two New Testament texts, didn't show one primary Kemet text of correlation. Let me know that the you can only get away with it. That to, to the people that won't understand that. So my first question says, says I'm not supposed to be argumentative. I have another question. I just posed this to a question for you, Jabari. How can you be showing Christianity stole from Kemet, which is a first century development, and only show two verses or from two books? chapters, I should say, in the New Testament text that you weren't even correlating to have been stolen from Kemet. All right. All right. Jabari, before you say something, let me say this, Jabari. And Pastor Bennett, you know I love you, brother, but I got to spank you on this one right here. Before Garfield, me and Jabari called you and asked you, just be quiet for a minute, me and Jabari... Hey, Me and Jabari hey, called you hey, boy, boy, and asked you, oh, boy, brother, I know it's getting ready to steam right now. now. <laughs> I know it's going to steam right now. That's why he going crazy. And Jabari, he don't want the people to hear this. Hold on, brother. Me and Jabari called you and asked you if you wanted to do this debate 
on Christmas Eve. What was your response to us, brother? I don't want to say it, but you are here right now and you watch damn near the whole debate. So I asked Jabari, Jabari, what was his response to us? I'll tell you my response. All right, all right. Well, brother, tell us what, what happened when we asked you if you wanted to do this debate on New Year's Eve. Go ahead, tell us. All right. First of all, stop holding Jabari's pampers. Jabari, brother, I asked you a question, brother. I know you did. I'm yeah, telling, answer I'm the gonna question. Ask, I'm going to answer it, but stop holding his pampers. Number one, I told Jabari that I wasn't about to, to be debating around Christmas. I was going to be spending time with my family. And I and here's my exact words to Jabari, that I have to prepare for a debate with Jabari. And I'm not about to be spending my time preparing for a debate. If that means I can't watch a debate and then ask a question, that's crazy. I okay. was I did debate on Christmas, and I wasn't right. about to debate on Christmas. You're my brother. I let you get away with it. Go ahead. Yeah, Jabari. But I watched Hey, Sharnetta. No, JJ, Charnetta. stop. Stop, JJ. It's not your turn. Stop, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I watched this debate, and I'm coming on. I'm going like to come back to you, Jay. Dance, and I've asked Jabari a simple question. If the debate is Christianity stole from Kemet, don't, Jabari, like, don't try to get off the hook. I'm not debating Jabari. I didn't want to debate Jabari now. I did say when I would debate Jabari, and Jabari agreed to that. So ask question me about something that he agreed with me. I'm not studying for no debate. All so right, Pastor. You got it. Go ahead, Jabari. Answer your question, answer. Jabari. Go ahead, Jabari. You need me to repeat. I want to say that um, this question is one of the most ridiculous things that I have ever heard. <laughs> and, and usually what I do is I try to give Pastor Bennett a little bit more grace and respect. But I'm going to remind you that the last time we were on a channel together, I told you that I have been giving you more respect perhaps than you deserve. You told, you called me a liar. You said that I was prideful. So I want to say here that because you did that, instead of saying we have a difference of opinion, you called me a liar. And then when I said, I don't think you should use those words, it really charged. You said, well, I think you lied. So I wanted to let you know here, before I answer your question, that I'm no longer going to call you Pastor Bennett. I'm going to call you William. Because I've been giving you too much deference. And until you call me Priest Jabari or Hemneter and Tepe Jabari Osaze, I will no longer call you Pastor Bennett. That's well, will you at least put Mr. on it, though, Jabari? Wait, wait, that's no, no, because he calls me Jabari. So I'm going to call him William. Listen, he's a pastor and I'm a high priest. I'm giving mm. him a difference. That is I pretty fair, though, though, Pastor Bennett. I always call you Pastor Bennett. And I was that is pretty fair, though. Until he came on here and called me a liar. So let me now to the now this to the H OK. Now, hold on, hold on, Pastor. Pastor, it's not your turn, brother. Okay. Pastor, I know it's a big pill, brother. I know it's a big pill to swallow, brother. Now to the question. Nobody's crying. Nobody's crying. You throw a jab and I throw the right cross. You're a cry baby. I don't care if you call me William or anybody. I know you don't know how it feels, but now you're going to get turned up, Jabari. And then you're going to be really afraid of the turned up, Jabari. So let me say this. It is ridiculous that Christians often argue when you find things that are problematic in the Old Testament, they try to say, well, that's the Old Testament. The last mm. I checked, they hand the whole book to their to their parishioners. <laughs> it's the word of God. They don't say, this is the word of God. Don't read the New Testament. No, or only read the New Testament. Right, the right. The word of God, ignore the Old Testament. Right. They, they hand them both of them. Mm -hmm. I did not think that it was necessary, nor do I think it's necessary for me to give you an equal derivation of Old and New Testament. That is ridiculous. That's crazy. That's crazy. That entire book, Old and New, is what is given to believers of the Christian tradition. And so uh, this is a ridiculous argument. I'm not going to say yes or no. Or it's it's a it's a ridiculous argument. It's a ridiculous argument. So I'm not going to go down that road. I want you to recognize that there are sections of comedic text in that book, and they have not been cited. The only one, by the way, that cites it now is a Catholic text. Y'all want to talk all kinds of stuff about the Catholics. They trying to be more honest than y'all Negroes in the pews. Mm. That's, crazy. That's crazy to me. 
That's crazy to me. That is crazy to me. They're willing to give the African credit. The African is trying not to take the credit. What is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with y'all? How did you get so led astray and confused? This guy gonna come up here and say, you only use two quotes from the New Testament. How can you say Christianity? That entire book is what Christians use. Thank you. Thank so you I want to I want to just say that uh, I'm not taking it easy on him anymore. I'm not going to be disrespectful. I just, right, turn turn it up on him, man. Turn, let's turn it up on these guys. I don't do disrespect, but I'm not going to give extra deference any longer. No more, pe no more, man. All right, all right. All right. Let me go on over to um. Hey, hold on, side. Don't do that. Sir. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, I just want to. Okay, sir. I thought I was coming up. Bro. No, hold on, JJ. He was talking to Pastor hey, Bennett. Let Pastor Bennett back respond. Put me back on the screen. I don't even want to. So I just want to. I just want to get some questions in. We know. I just want everybody in chat to realize. Y'all have seen this happen before. When Jabari goes on these rants and starts talking about some else other than the question, it's because he know we can't answer. Now let me quickly respond. Just in a peaceful way to Jabari. Jabari, my mama named me William. You could call me William every time. That ain't no disrespect to me, brother. I could care less if you call me pastor or not. I'm not caught up. And whether you call me pastor or not, don't make me one. Stop crying. But the fact that you're talking about <laughs> is Christianity stole from Kemet and you brought up two verses in the New Testament, which is where Christianity was developed and didn't show anybody one scripture of the New Testament that copied or stole from Kemet only you could fool the conscious community. Get your Cheerios over here. Just know outside of this, bro, you are getting laughed at. Here's my next question, Jabari. On the hey, hold up, Pastor Bennett. I'm going to let you continue. I'm going to let you continue. But I want everybody under the sound of my voice. Doesn't this sound like the same anger that Garfield brought and his ass didn't show up? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> let me get let but me get I know you would have showed up, though, Pastor. I know that. I, Sonetta, Sonetta, if I would have showed up to this, you would have been you would have been very mad at Jabari. Mm. So now let me let me let me let me let me finish him off with this. Jabari, in the beginning of your presentation, you brought up three three men, right? I don't remember what the light skinned man name was. I don't say that disrespectfully. I just don't remember what the light skinned man name was. Could you remind me of his name? Not Dr. Clark. There was a light skinned brother that you brought up that you said was on your team. His name is Dr. Asa Hilliard. His name is Ooh. Dr. Asa Hilliard. Dr. Okay. Asa, Asa Hilliard. Dr. Hilliard. Okay. Okay. Doc, that doctor was, um, you put up uh, a part where he was speaking and he began to talk about Osiris. And they asked him about the resurrection. And he said Osiris was murdered by his brother, cut up into however many pieces. He said different stories, got a different amount of pieces. 14 those, pieces. All right. Those pieces was collected again. And then he was. The catfish was supposed to have ate the last piece, all the right. phallic. And, and he resurrected. Okay. Now that's supposed to be a, a I don't know even that. That can't be no Christian, Christian story. I hope you know that. But I, I, I have a question. So he brought up Osiris being murdered by his brother. Right. And his brother was his deity or whatever. And then you went to John 14. And you brought up the scripture where Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and light. No one gets to the Father but by me. You compare that quickly, Jabari, to who in Kemet? Those, those two things are, are actually... I know. In, I, I know. I'm just asking, who did you compare very, the John 14 to? Wait, wait. They're in two very different parts. He's um, trying to answer you, Pastor. Let him answer I you. Am, I really am trying to answer him. I, he says I'm crying, but he does that. You see his face? I'm asking a simple question. Who did He's you trying to answer, answer you, brother. Hey, so, to... And listen, so, let me hear the, let me give the question clearly so you can know what I'm asking. It's simple. Who did you compare the John 14? I understand the okay. question. All right, go ahead. I understand the question. Okay. What I'm saying to you is, is that those, I did not put the two of them together. They're not together. I didn't say you did. Well, the way you described it sounds like I was using the description of um, one needing to go through Jesus to, to get to the Father as something that was connected to no. a steward. No, but, sir. but I'm saying, brother, 
What I am saying is that those two different things were not connected. I did show you how um, Jesus says that you no one gets to the Father but through me. And I was describing it as being connected to the manner in which the comedic people always describe the judgment. When someone goes through judgment, the person that takes them, the character that takes them to see Asar the Father is Heru. Okay, thank you. That's, that's what I asked you. That's, a, that's right. what I was saying. Come on, yeah. Paris. There's other people on the panel, bro. Hold on. That's what I was asking, Jabari. And here is why I brought up the first thing with the doctor and then that question. My question to you is you just said you use the John 14 scripture to show that Haru has to take people till they get to the Father. In the John 14 scripture, it's Jesus. So then Jesus would be the Haru, right? In Kemet. So my question, but he wouldn't be the old Cyrus, right? Because Jesus said that about the Father. So my question to you is that I would like for you to explain is why does Kemet, meaning people like you, get to keep mix matching who y'all want Jesus to be? So the doctor's talking about the resurrection and the cut up the people. But it wasn't the father who was who died and was resurrected. It was Jesus. But in the Kemet story, Osiris is the father. Haru was the son. But in the Christian story, Jesus is the one that died, not the father. So why do y'all keep getting, y'all want to mix Jesus with Osiris when it comes to resurrection? And then y'all want to mix Jesus with Haru when it comes to being the son of Isis. But in the Christian story, Jesus is the same one who died and resurrected and was the son of Mary. So why in Kemet do y'all take Jesus and mix him with different characters in Kemet? In the Christian story, Jesus is not the father. So when Jesus says in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man gets to the Father. In Kemet, you're saying the Father is Osiris. You're saying then in that story, Jesus will be Haru. But in the resurrection, you're saying that's Osiris. You're not saying Haru's been died and, and resurrected. So why do y'all keep getting to say, hold on. So Let my here's my question, I'll bow out. Why do y'all keep mixing Jesus with different characters? You've asked the All question. Right. You've All asked right, the question. Go ahead. You've asked the question. Okay. So I want you to hear that what you are doing is you're being extremely literal. First of all, I want you to recognize that there are aspects of the Jesus narrative that are in the story of Ast. There are aspects of the Jesus narrative that are in the story of Heru. And there are aspects of the Jesus narrative that come from the story of Asar. Uh, the Christian, the, the comedic people weren't telling a literal story. And so they didn't feel that they needed to pin it down in that manner. You say it's the Christ, it's the, the comedic people that are taking from everywhere, when in fact it's the Christians who are telling the story later that are pulling from everywhere. It's a term in psychology called projection. Projection. You are the one that is advocating that the that that we are taking from everywhere. It is the Christians that took from everywhere. This that's a, I, I mean I you know this is like kindergarten. I don't even. That's crazy. You hold on, hold on, Pastor. You can't do that. You got to show discipline. He didn't do that on you. He let you talk, brother. I don't even understand how you think that's a willing a, a winning argument. Because the reality is the comedic tradition never tried to create, call, describe um, uh, these individuals as literal. Legendary, yes, but not literal. It's the Christian tradition that then begins to try to create a literal person. So they literally calcify the story under one individual. I will admit that it is easier to follow because it's one um, individual. And that's because you know, the folks that created the story did some mighty fine editing. But the reality is, it is Jesus that pulls from those stories, not the comedic people who are pulling from those stories. All right, let's who move on. Folks? Who are the folks? Hold on. Hey, hold on, Pastor. Hold on, Pastor. I'm going to come right back around to you. Let me get um Sister Freedom in the building and then JJ and then Philip. Sister Freedom, do you have any questions? Yes. I first want to say congratulations, Jabari. You did a wonderful job. Walk me. A, a, a wonderful job trying to explain how this all came about. But what the pastor does not understand is that it's two forms of Christianity. 
okay? And the the form that he's talking about is actually Europeanism. It has, mm. to, you know, Christianity was way back before. He don't even know how Jesus came about. How did Jesus mm. come about? Please don't say through Mary. Oh, yeah, it did come through the created creature, Mary. But when? That is the question. But what Jabari, let me ask you this question. Isn't it puzzling to you how when we were introduced to Jesus and Mary and every other biblical person in the Bible, they were all of European descent. Uh -oh. and, we get these and we argue with each other about this biblical Jesus who is by no means, he's white. And the, the stories were stolen from our stories from our ancient stories. That's the fact. Do you know how Jesus came about? Do you know what it was before his name was changed to Jesus? Wake him up, wake him up. I'm, I'm asking the pastor, I mean, cause Jabari, I'm quite sure you know that the Romans made an alliance with the Spaniards and that's how the name Jesus came about. Mm. Okay, you wanna, you wanna, you want to look it up? You want to look it up? Because you actually <laughs> are challenging the bar. That's the but there's other people that have information as well. The point is, is I'm tired of seeing our protectors get on our, our protectors. When I say that the black man is supposed to be protecting me and taking up for white Jesus, give them back their stuff. Okay. All of this started from them stealing from Osiris, Osset, and Heru. Get them, get them, get them, Sister Freedom. I'm ready to go on the Paul show, but I can break the whole line down to you how it happened. Okay, so maybe you need to get Dr. Walter Williams' book. But yeah, stop get it. Get them, Sister Freedom. Stop it. It's, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous because you cannot make this man black. Unless you, you cannot make Jesus black, unless you go back in the history and see how it came about. And then you wouldn't be sitting on here saying the things that you're saying. But Jabari, you did a wonderful job. It ain't no way around it. They stole the stories. These are your, this is a European form of Christianity. They ain't never had no history. They never had a history. Everything mm. about them, they stole from us, period. No matter what it is. They stole it from us. This okay. ain't this, this ain't Sinetta talking. This me, nigga. Speak your speech, nigga. Speak your speech, nigga. Speak your speech. You okay. built like that? I mean, in other words, what you're saying is you want us <laughs> to believe that this entity impregnated Wake him up. Child, got her pregnant. Then, and wait a minute, he broke his own commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And she was already contracted to marry another man. Mm, and then mm, she has a baby. Damn. And he said, and, and wait a minute, this God is so non powerful that he had to let his own child die for the sins of the people that he created. Are you serious? That don't even make no stop it. I want you to stop it. It's sickening. It sounds crazy. The whole book sounds crazy. Jesus ain't walked on nobody's <laughs> border. I mean, I know you don't want to say nothing because I'm ready. You challenge Jabari. You just don't challenge somebody who got that knowledge. Okay. There you go. He don't want no smoke with you, Sister Freedom. Thank you, Sister Freedom. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hey, hey, hold on, Pastor Bennett. Thank you. We're gonna go on over to my brother. Um. Oh. Um. Judah. Judah is on the call, and then we're gonna go to Philip. Go ahead, Judah. Unmute yourself. Hey. All right, man. I, I wrote some stuff down, man. And like I say, I don't think it's fair that all of y'all coming at Jabari like this. I mean, pseudo killers. He killed all y'all pseudo killers. Right. I'm on my Rush Squad, Dagger Squad, the Reggie Lights. Right. All of y'all was, was hoping and praying that Jabari lost. Mm. Not me. I knew he wasn't going to lose. I knew Garfield wasn't going to show up. And then, Pastor Benny, you had the audacity to come in here and try to challenge his source. This is what you uh -oh. said. You said that that source that Jabari posted was, in that source, everything was historical. That person 
and that source believed everything historical. So let me ask you this. You can answer when it's your turn. Did Christ celebrate Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving, all that stuff that you push because you're not a real Christian? You don't follow uh, how the real Christians were. The real Israelites were the Christians, the first Christians. You in here doing all these pagan holidays. And you, uh -oh. you for you to come to get to Jabari, you got to get through me. You know why? Because you've been avoiding me on this topic. Do the most high accept these pagan holidays. You ran from it in the goddamn debate. You know it. Now, I, what else I got on my list? Okay. All right, uh, this is uh, for Sarnet real quick. Why didn't I get a victory uh, a show when Garfield ran from the debate for me? I just want to know and document it. We ain't got to get into that. But you did make an announcement that Garfield, this is the second time he ran this year. He should be banned for a year. A year. <laughs> God damn it. You messing up the money over here. We trying to make the money. Mm, you see? Damn. So All right. Uh, let's see. I they think they're going to be killing in another. I think this is the year that you – um. Convert, brother. You're doing great, though, Jay. See, now you, now you, love didn't, you, now you didn't mess my, you didn't mess my thought up, man. Okay, hold up. So here's my question. I'm gonna get out the way. Hold up. I want to ask Pastor Bennett before you go through Gar, uh, try to get to Jabari. Will you debate me? Do the Most High God accept these pagan holidays? You answer that when it's uh, your turn. You know, mm, uh, Pastor Bennett, he calling you out, man. Right. He you know he ran from that in the debate. Okay, and then I got one more thing on here. Then I'm gonna yield my time. Like I can say he he beat up all these dudes. Uh, yeah, Jabari beat y'all off. Uh, I did pass the <laughs> I think that's all my notes, man. Uh, oh, all right. And Jabari, since me and you debated, man, I have I will have to say you have elevated. You know, you got better, man. Once you got in the ring with me, hey, them skills, <laughs> hey, they got better. <laughs> hey. That's what happens, man. Hey, at least I'm at least you a warrior and you stayed in the ring with seven thousand. You didn't run like a see Jabari got guys running on this platform. He had shocker running. Now Garfield running. You see? <laughs> Gar hey, this is the Mayweather of the House of Continents. And the only debate that should be next is is Jabari versus JJ seven thousand. Not you. All right. Well, let's go on over to Philip. Philip, what's up, man? Talk to us. Hey, uh, peace to the chat. Uh, you hear me clearly? Yes, we hear you, brother. Okay, because I um under the weather a little bit. So yeah. How do you feel? Your man ain't show up, bro. And I know you was rooting for him. Um, it's disappointing. Uh I actually reading the books simultaneously, um, The Seven White Lies, right, by uh Jabari. And the misconceptions by uh Garfield. I'm reading them side by side. <laughs> Excuse me. I uh, had this debate to be a very close, hotly contested debate. But when I look and compare the two books, I I, I figured Jabari would have kind of edged out Garfield on clarity of presentation. Mm. Yeah, on clarity. You're a good I, reader, brother. You're a good reader. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Uh, so I want to ask um, Brother Jabari, let me say first of all, Brother Jabari, <coughs> um, congratulations. A win is a win is a win. And um, congratulations on your win. I like your presentation. I might not agree with everything, of course, but I like your presentation. I just have one question, bro, because I'm not going to uh, kill my voice out. <coughs> um, in terms of the uh, plagiarism, let me let me say even if, as a Christian, right, or a Bible-believing person, even if you don't agree with the plagiarism part, um, you can't deny the at least reality that there are some stark similarities, right? Uh, but in line of that, I think the Bible has about 30,000 plus verses. I don't know if you have ever done any mm, study or... Uh, statistics on it, about what part of that, what percentage of that 30,000, let's say 30,000 to be safe, about how many of those 30,000 would you say you can find or there is direct evidence of a plagiarism? I, I think that the best um, arguments, there are lots of, uh, of sections of the Bible that 
sound like they're taken from other parts of the comedic text, right? Mm. Um, there, there are tons of them, but I like to actually, in order to crystallize the argument to make it clearer, because you can say, well, they just sound similar. I mean, other people have things that are similar, but when you find things that are there that are virtually verbatim or verbatim, then you have to actually deal with the reality that these folks were stealing. I didn't even get to read you the quote. There's, there, there are like four or five slides I didn't show you um, that describes how when they destroyed the Serapium, they actually were also known to take some of the text and pumice things away and write the stuff they wanted. Most of those people that did that, that uh, revolted could not read, right? So what we're saying is, is that the poor people, the less educated people were weaponized to destroy something so the more educated, the powerful Christians could steal. So um, that's part of the, the challenge that we're seeing. I have no idea what percent, I would, I would not give it a percentage. I, I, I've never thought of it that way. I think the best argument is um, that there are several sections that seem to be taken verbatim. And we don't see those narratives clearly um, translated in Greek or Roman or, or another language, intermediate language. It seems like they took them directly, unless what they did is the comedic source had been translated and they stole the comedic source and destroyed the Greek version, for example, of um, uh, the, the instructions of a minimal. I would not have put it past the, the Greco-Roman um, folks that lived in Alexandria to translate, if they were able to, some of the comedic text. I wouldn't have put it past them because they were trying to actually collect the world's great knowledge, right? But that if there is a text that is a complete translation of some of these sources, those have been destroyed. The, the, the Christians destroyed so many texts that that answer is one that will be left to the dustbin of history. What we can clearly say though, is that there are several sections that are verbatim comedic text. And, and that's the best way for us to, to understand it. You're muted, you're muted. Yeah, okay, one more, right? Let me just follow up with one more and then I'll, I'll be done. Um, so since we are, uh, I think you're comparing the King James translation to um, the chemistic test, right? Do you think that if you look at the original text, like say the Hebrew original writing and the Greek, it will be more profoundly seen that way? I've actually tried to look at some of the percentages before. Not percentage, I'm saying percentage because <laughs> you guys are asking a crazy question. I actually have tried to look at some of the other translations and see if they seem very similar. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly can say to you that it, it seems very clear to me that the the challenges in the text exist, not just in English. Okay. I, I simply use the KJV just because um, most people actually have um, read the, the KJV. All right, good. Thank you very much for your input. Yeah. And once again, con congratulations on your win. Wow, All you. right, Brother Philip, thank you. Let me go to Ahad. How you say your name, my brother? Aniya. Aniya, let me go to Aniya. Aniya, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. And peace and blessings, Jabari. I enjoyed All right. watching your presentation. Um, when I was listening to your presentation, you had a specific slide up that mentioned um, the Savior's model that you developed. Could you pull that slide up? Because I wanted to make sure I saw what I saw on the bottom. It ties right into what my actual question is. Is that possible? You had the word Savior's. The acronym was um, yes. in the order. Yes, I will. And as you pull it up, I'll, I'll say the, the, the reason why I'm questioning, where my question is coming from is on the topic of, of methodology. You know, over the past several centuries, there have been new traditions that emerge regarding how to interpret uh, the texts and the materials that come from this part of the world. And it seems like you fall within a specific school of thought. And I think your, your comment on the bottom ties right into it. So this is your savior's model, and you can correct me if I'm wrong as I try to summarize what it is, but these are seven key points that you've identified within the Christian tradition, which can be derived specifically from the comedic tradition. Is that is that fair to say? So far? Uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly like that, 
Am some, I close? Of, some of what you're seeing is that what I'm arguing is that these aspects are not um, are either not present or not critical to the Jewish or Hebrew tradition. Right. The major hey, hold on one minute, Jabari. Um, please leave. Everybody leave Imhotep 360 degrees alone. Let him write. Don't block him. Let him write. Y'all leave the brother alone. Go ahead. So some of some of what that's that's the major point I'm trying to make here, right? Some right. of it likely also came through the um, Greco-Roman traditions. Who and took you think that the Greco-Roman traditions on one side, the Hebrew tradition on another side, and then the Kemetic tradition on the third side, all those things combine forces to kind of influence Christianity. Is that your position? I'll show you, I'll show you the model as well. Can I show that? To, you want me to show that to you? Yeah. Because I don't want to. I don't want to misquote you or mischaracterize what oh, your position is. Oh, I appreciate is. that, brother. Let me try to see if I can. I'm gonna pull up my model so you can see how I'm suggesting um, some of these things got into the Kemetic tradition, uh, into, into the, the Christian tradition. tradition. Yes, into the Christian tradition. Uh, man, Sonetta, can you imagine? There are 54 active slides. Yeah, we're gonna. I want to be finished with this by nine o'clock, Jabari. I'm like three hours late now, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry, brother. So, you know, I'm, okay, well, I got to well, hear okay, it all. If I just get right to, to my point. What, here's, what, here's the model, but um, yeah. It's loading up? It's there. Sonetta has to share it. Okay, so the comedic spiritual tradition has a direct... Break this down real quick. The comedic spiritual... The, the Christian tradition or the Abrahamic traditions took directly from the comedic tradition, right? But they also got stuff from the comedic tradition from the rest of the mystery traditions that were in the Mediterranean region. Those are things that the mystery traditions also took from the comedic tradition. Are you talking about traditions in like the Ugaritic world that were imposed or spread directly from Kemet into the part of the world surrounding the biblical lands? Or are you talking about like ancient Sumerian traditions and you're tying those back into Kemet? I'm not talking about the Sumerian traditions at all. What I'm okay. talking about here right. is about- So in, in this, in this wait, uh, wait, field of study, about, um, I'm glad to see that you have this broader scope than just Kemet because in this field of study on an academic level, there's a, there's a branch of research that's known as like ancient Near Eastern comparative research, comparative, you know, mythology. And- right. It's obvious that every new tradition, whenever anybody writes anything, they're not, the words are not born out of a vacuum. It, it, they're not coming from outer space. The literary traditions do have relationships to the traditions which came before them. So when you study the Hebrew scriptures, it's a relatively new tradition compared to all of those that came before it. My question is that in light of the fact that in the Hebrew scriptures, you can see elements of things that come from ancient Kemet, elements of things that come from the Ugaritic world or the Canaanites, you can see elements of, of tradition, which come from Sumer. You can see elements of things that come from Persia. Like you see all these things kind of um, being noted there. I don't, I don't hear in your presentations, I hear you finding parallels or correlations where, okay, this came from there, but I don't see you addressing how things were transformed, how the meaning of certain things were given a new application or a new idea within this specific uh, cultural context. And I think that will be an interesting conversation to have. You know, I, I messaged Sinetta earlier about doing another presentation here on Sinetta TV. I don't know if you saw my previous one. On yeah, Twitter. I remember you. Hey, but you. But you rock with Garfield over there. Don't think we no, don't know that. Garfield's sitting all his people, just so you know, Jabari. I don't, me and Garfield aren't from the same school of thought at all. So, But you be over nah, there, nah, though, nah, right? No, 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 no. That's I my can, brother from, me, um, oh, yeah, okay. I could respond. Right. I know we're supposed to be closing quickly. Let me just respond really quickly. Um, so, all right, I'll, I'll summarize my points and then I want to hear your response. Okay, go ahead. So it's my position that the Hebrew scriptures represent a, a revolutionary new approach to addressing things that people were already thinking about. So there are certain comments and topics and philosophies and ideas which were very common in the ancient world, but some of them were simply borrowed. Some of them were inherited but others were giving new application, which made the Abrahamic tradition so unique. And um, addressing both of those sides to see how certain things were just borrowed and presented as is versus other things that were inherited and retreated from a new perspective, I think it'll give a more balanced point of view on the uh, topic. And I'm curious what you think about that. Well, my, my argument is not about um, in any great length about the Hebrew tradition. 
right? I've studied the Hebrew tradition, but that's not where I'm actually spending most of my focus. My focus is primarily on Christianity. When someone's writing a book or making an argument, you can't argue everything, right? I mean, it's just, you would, you, know, you would be doing it forever. Naturally. I, I actually don't see the Hebrew tradition as unique as you as you um, describe. I think that there is uniqueness in many of the traditions that existed in the region. I think that some of that concept that the Hebrews did something that was really unique, some of that is, is their own propaganda. Um, I also want to say to you that um, I, I think it's also very interesting that um, there are certain things that the comedic tradition takes from other that the um Christian tradition takes from other places. And I, I I'm very clear. So I don't know if you can put me on the screen again for a second. Um, I'ma just tell you some of the stuff I'm reading, right? I mean, you know, Old Testament parallels, you know, um, ancient Near Eastern thought in the Old Testament, ancient religions, the Messiah. And these are just the books that I just had laying, not not the full story. Hey, we're in we're in the same boat. Yeah, so so I want you to know that I, I think that your argument is an interesting one. It's not the focus of my argument, but I don't think that it's an entirely fallacious argument. I think a fallacious argument. I think it's actually one that is interesting to me, one that I think that um uh more study can can be done on. But I would do it without placing some sort of primary focus or some sort of um uh, special status on the Hebrew traditions, which I think are not as unique as as some people would like to describe them um and so well, that's that's kind of where i would go well my uh, last comment would be i appreciate you um i'm a good friend with dr chica cool down here in atlanta at clark atlanta oh, university sure. yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah he's spoken very highly of you and um yeah. i would like to see if in the future sonetta can set up uh, another opportunity for me to present on this topic and if you could give me some constructive criticism yes hey my brother you still got my number Yes, I do. I sent you some text messages earlier today. Okay, got you. Got you. We could set up something and we could get it in again. Well, hey, bro, hey, brother, I apologize for that, man. I thought you wanted Garfield the lights trying to sneak in. Nah, My nah, he's not with them. Yeah, he the one that he know Hebrew. This is the brother that did their presentation. Yeah, yeah the brother's yeah. more closer to the Demona brothers. That's yep, out there. Yep, yep. You know, so that's why, yeah, Chris I apologize Yusuf, for him. all of them. All yeah. Good. And if you see uh, uh, Brother Tika before I do, please give him a, a, a a black power hug, you know what I mean? Because we'll do. He's, a, he's you know, it's part of that Jagna collective, you know, with yeah, the, the I don't get, lineage. Yeah, you know, I don't get to see him as much as I used to, but yeah. um, he's he's clearly my brother. I'll probably be going back up to to his office at the university next week. Oh wow! Oh wow! Let me let me say one other thing. Um, Sister Alberta Paris um said that the Sumer mystery system predates the Kemetic mystery system, and I would have to say I'm not sure I agree with that analysis. Sometimes what people do is they look at proto-Sumer and then they look at classical Kemet. Or, or Jabari, or Jabari, they hear other people say it because they are Hebrew. My sister here, she's also a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah. So they listen and hear other people say that. So, yeah. you know, they would yeah. pair it with people they hear. It's a problematic argument. I, I honestly believe that if you're going to analyze Kemet and... and um, and uh, Sumer, you have to do it uh, together. You have to look at proto Kemet and proto Sumer, um, and so that's that's probably what you'd need to do in order to have a better understanding. And when I hear also that the mystery system existed, I would love for you to give us a date based on sources and archaeology, um, because sometimes people also I, I continually say this: tradition, spiritual traditions don't form all at one time, right? They don't form all at one time. Um, none of them do. No one says this is the idea. It's complete. We'll, we won't do anything else. It doesn't exist that the, the, humanity is much more complex and nuanced and and grow and change in ways that are a lot more um, are, are a lot more interesting. So um, I would love for you to show me any proof whatsoever that the Sumerian, the, 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 the mystery system of Sumer actually um, is one that is fully formed um uh than the ones that we see in in Kemet. Okay, so Jabari, let me move on right away. Uh let me get Sun Chow and then I'm going to go to Thunder and then we're going to close this thing out. Sun Chow, you are on the call, brother. Peace. Thank you, Senator, for helping me in. Happy New Year, everybody. Peace, brother. Uh, brother Jabari, got a good job, sir. Um my question to you is um <clears throat> with regards to it being stolen, I know that's what um Jaba, uh, Brother Garfield and his crew was kind of leaning on that heavy, whether it's stolen or not. 
Um, and my question is regarding that. Um, in so much as the the Semitic priests welcomed the the, the Greeks into Kemet, and uh, went as far as to declare uh, Alexander the Greek the son of a god. Uh, is it fair to say that the son of a god and his descendants could have stolen, or did they? in that case have a right to that information being that he, they were declared, uh, or at least Alexander was declared the son of a God. I was just wondering how you would address that. Good question, brother. I, I don't know whether I would agree that he was declared son of God. I believe that he could declared himself the son of God as the person who then became in control of that nation. Um, and so it's not like he came through the, the tradition and they bequeath this title upon him. Um, Alexander doesn't even stay in Kemet very long. He dies um, quite er much earlier than most other people would, would have thought uh, when you study the, the history of, of Alexander himself. So that, I think that that's one thing that we have to understand. Um, I also want to say to you that it is true that there were times that the Kemetic people um, uh, allowed other people and other parts of uh, uh, tra traditions into their um, rich milieu of tradition, right? Um, but I, I wanna also be clear that the, the fundamental Kemetic tradition is Kemetic Cushitic. I know that, I, I assume that Garfield was gonna come here and start talking about Astarte and Reshep and Baal and all of those things. But I want us to be clear that when we look at the Kemetic tradition and its major deities, they are Kemetic in origin. Um, and when I say Kemetic, I really do mean Cushitic Kemetic, right? Um, and so that is that is a, a, another very important part of this. In terms of stealing, um, I think that Garfield wanted us to believe that stealing isn't something that we understand. Like there was some standard for stealing that we're not aware of. And that's the reason why I start, I don't know if you saw this brother, I started with definitions for stealing, definitions for plagiarism, definitions for um, syncretism, because um, they would like to sometimes utilize some terms and mystify people without actually explaining their terms. And I did not want our origin, our audience to, to do that. Once I started saying stealing is stealing and, and explained it, gave the definition and it's something everyone understood, I didn't hear them argue that as much because they thought that they were going to find sort of a loophole in the argument that was going to help them win. That loophole doesn't exist. The reality is if you take something from someone wrongfully, the definition, one of them says, to take the property of another wrongfully, especially as habitual or regular practice, um, we can clearly see that there are large aspects of the Christian tradition that had their origin in Kemet and even text. That's the, that's the part of it that got under Pastor Bennett's Williams skin so much. Um, because we actually see that there are texts that have been taken and placed into the Christian Bible. So the reality is there's no other way for us to describe it other than stolen. Now, if they had borrowed it and said, we get this information from a large number of sources, we think that these are wise sources, and we're creating an amalgamation of teachings for people to use for their edification, that would be different. Instead, they took from those places, called them demons, destroyed them and murdered them. That, that is stealing. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to describe it. The analogy that I used was, if you saw someone wearing someone else's clothes, their jackets, their jewelry, and then the next time you walk past their house, you saw that that same person that was wearing their stuff was burning that house down, you would say, that they stole. You would say they stole their stuff and now they're trying to hide the evidence. That is precisely what we see when we look at the early Christian tradition. All right, you finished brother? You got another question, that's good, that's it? I'm good, thank you brother. All right, let's move on over to Thunder Thunder and then Jabari, you can close us out of here. Yep. Okay. How you doing Jabari? Peace brother. It's always a pleasure to speak with you my man. Uh, you did a good job tonight. A uh, couple of questions, brother. Did you You're know, a Garfield knight, ain't you? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yep, yep. I was getting ready to say something, but I didn't want you to say, JJ, be quiet. Yep. I can speak. Yep. My brother. I'm, I'm How you brother. feel about your brother letting you down, man? I spoke with Garfield today. Uh, he, he explained to me 
uh, the situation and um, so let me get this right. Let me get this right. He explained it to you, but he didn't explain it to us. Why he was hiding under the bed, huh? Hold on, JJ. He okay. explained. Hold up, brother. Listen, you telling me he explained it to you, <laughs> but he didn't explain it to me or Jabari, who are the debate. I'm the debate host here. But he couldn't explain it to me, but he explained it to you. Somebody that ain't got nothing to do with the debate. So let's do it like this, right? I want to stay out of grown man business. Oh, okay. I thank (laughs) you. I appreciate it. There you go. There you go. I got you. You know what I'm saying? That's just the code. That's the code I live by. And you bought that, right? Because he didn't explain it to me and Jabari when I asked him. I asked him straight up, what's going on? Why? Oh, brother, I can't tell you now. I, I can't tell you. But he explained it to you, though. I got you. Know, like my brother, you keep pressing me, right? Hey, Jay. What, what, what hey, was the explanation, bro? Mute the brother. Can you mute him? Oh, uh, kick him out or something? Let me just say this real quick. Like, I, don't, I don't do three bad. ways. Hold on, um, Jabari. Please, one second, man. I know this is your show, man, but my brother keep pressing, right? He went like four times. I told him, hey, man, I want to stay out of that. I want to. Ch-. He keep pressing, right? So let me do this. The thing's supposed to start at one o'clock. Um, j- um, no, no, that's a lie. It was supposed to start the December the 24th. Okay, cool. No problem. All on right. Today, on today, the, the on the thirty first, it's supposed to start at one o'clock, and um, it didn't start at one o'clock for whatever reason, um, whatever technical issues you all were having, and what he was doing was, I guess, being held accountable for whatever issue was happening, was going on, and he was asked to to come on a little later than what he could have. He had, a, I guess, he had a prior engagement. That he had to attend to um, at four. So did Jabari, and so did I. That's fine. So so yeah, did Jabari, but because we owed it to the people, we had to sacrifice that. So what are you saying, brother? Yeah, my brother. Uh, a lot of times you can't sacrifice stuff. You know, what I'm saying I'm not going to sacrifice my family for you. Uh, for well, how you know his family? Because he ain't tell us nothing about that. I don't know. What, listen, why would he explain I'm, it to I'm you? Giving, and you don't have a goddamn thing to do giving, with the debate, brother. What I'm doing is giving. But he don't explain nothing to us. I think those he are excuses. We are not buying it. He ran. He fucking that's ran. Right. And he let all of y'all down. And y'all, y'all mad. That's, that's all. Y'all, y'all just mad. Out. You just no, mad. You brought up. Who's that? <laughs> talking about kick JJ out, but JJ ain't never ran from a debate. He talking about kick JJ out. Come on, man. Hold on. If I, matter, if I could just hey, add you, a little. You have attention no, deficit disorder. Hold on, hold on, brother. Listen, if I could just yeah, man. Get your ass out of here. To this because I was party to the conversation. The reality is that we were supposed to have the debate last week. And we accommodated him because we recognized that he had family issues that he had to address. You didn't see me be, uh, um, saying he was running. I didn't, I didn't try to do anything messed up. He had a family uh, um, uh, emergency, and I we tried to accommodate him. You have to understand the family emergency is what created the, the technical error. Because what ended up happening is um, the debate as we scheduled it in Eventbrite ended. So then we had to create a new Eventbrite, Right. All of that caused a lot of issues. What we ended up having to do then, and I did this myself, is we had to literally take over 200 emails from one source, one at a time, to put them together in order to send it to people. During that entire time that we were trying to fix things, you would think that if someone had something going on that meant that they were no longer able to be present, they would have called and said, look, guys, it's getting late. I can't do this. He did not do that. It wasn't until we called and said, brother, this stuff is almost fixed, that he said, I can't do it. And I'm telling you that he might have had something going on that might have been real. That's not even what I'm questioning. I'm questioning the way that he rocked on this. Why didn't he, after we had already sent the emails out to all those people trying to save things, right. you're going to say that you have an issue? Why didn't you reach out to us and explain to us what was happening? And hey, Jabbar, do you believe this would be appropriate for you all? Let me finish. Let me finish. And, and the other thing is, everyone else, he's told you, he's told Ankh, he's probably told Reggie why he says he couldn't appear, but he didn't even tell us. He just said no. That's what he said, because he's still butthurt over over Shaka 
go and coming on my platform and bringing his name up. I'm telling you, that's what it is. I haven't spoken to Garfield since he went away. Since he been gone. You mean to tell me you don't even call me? You don't set up nothing? You don't tell me nothing? Come on, man. I ain't buying that bullshit. That's garbage to me. So what I'm really saying is, is that even if he did have something that meant that he couldn't make a move, he should have actually reached out and done that. That's how you do business. He did not do that. So either way, um, it's unfortunate it didn't happen. I came out here out of my own time. Do you see it's 9 p.m.? I want to do stuff with my family as well. I'm here because the so many people were expecting this, wanted it. And I couldn't just say, well, he's out and I'm out. Right. So that that's the challenge. And the reality is, I you should understand the conversation was not adversarial. I said, well, when how much time do you have? When can you do it? And he refused to get, he said, I have about 30 minutes, which meant that he was going to be done at 4.30. I said, brother, how did you know we were going to finish the debate that started at 1 at 4.30? How did you know? How do you know that? We have now been sitting here talking for four hours and 30 minutes, brother. If you have a, 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 a drop dead point, you should express that to the people who have actually put forward extensive resources. The reality is that I invited a lot of people to watch, and I also have egg on my face today. That's the reality, because okay, they didn't no, the expect it. No, the reality is, I think this should have happened um, before now. I think you got in your feelings about him uh, insulting you. You quit. <clears throat> you canceled that debate, right? No. You, Man, get this guy out of here. Man, get your little bitch ass out of here, nigga. Get out of here. Get up out of here. He ain't gonna debate nobody. What the hell going on? That is incorrect. The reality is, we did not have a date. Get your little monkey ass out of here, nigga. Listen, we were still putting things together at that time when I said I would no longer debate him. And I said, I'm not gonna debate you until you make a genuine apology. Right. That night, and we would have been back on immediately. Right. We didn't have a date. It's not like I, I didn't cancel a debate. I didn't cancel a debate. That's the same thing that Reggie said. Yeah. There was no there was no um date scheduled. So we have to stop um making it sound like I cancel, he cancels. What's the big deal? That's not what happened. That is not what happened. I got in my feelings. Come on, stop it. Stop it. That is that is ridiculously transparent propaganda. And I think everyone in the chat, even folks that really um, that are really uh, we're rocking for him, can see that that that's that's not what happened. Yeah. All right, Jabari, so Jabari, history tonight. Um, JJ, say your last thing, and I'm yeah. gonna let you go, and then Jabari's right. gonna close this thing out. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, Jabari, you made history tonight, man. You shut down three camps in one. <laughs> Pseudo killers. I'm on Ross Scott and Dagger Squad. They all were bragging. L and the Reggie Lights. That's four. Mm. The Floyd Mayweather, the House of Conscience, is no joke, man. I mean, you can take down four camps at once, bro. Man, I, I, I can't do nothing but give you your flowers. But mm. speaking of flowers, I see a couple people in the chat have paid to say that JJ7000 is, is 2022 most improved scholar. I appreciate those roses as well. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much for that. I'm going to try to keep improving with my decorum and the quality of information that I bring out. With that being said, the people champ is out of here. Shout out to right, like Peace, die. peace, peace, JJ. All right, brother Jabari is on you, man. Take us out of here. Close us out, man. Yeah, yeah. I see And here. if I got some money left, we're going to get, I'm going to pay you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got some money left, brother. No, I'm, I'm going to get paid. There's a joke, brother. It's a joke, man. It better be a joke. Because go ahead, man. Go I, ahead. No, to do this, I'm, I'm in trouble too, right? So if I'm in trouble and I still didn't get paid, now you asking me to to, to like yeah. move out. You know no, no, I mean? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm about to move out. And I honestly believe that most people will not ask for um, money back. I, I think that most people, there'll be a few, but I think that most people will say, listen, we got, you know, nearly five hours of, of information um, on New Year's Eve and, and that's just how it'll be. Um, let me let me let me say to you that um, uh, this is uh, it's always an honor when I get to speak to this audience. Um, I, you know, uh, someone said to me recently, Jabari is talking to the wrong people. Sometimes they're profane. Sometimes they're arguing. He should be speaking on the college level. And I had to remind them, Jabari used to speak a lot on the college level. 
but there would be very small audiences that did not reflect our community. When Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark said that you are going to be um, uh, the, the, the scholar in the community, what they meant is I had to speak to our people. I will never make apologies for speaking to our people, even when sometimes because of the things that they have yet to understand, they come off a little gruff or they have they, they can be a little problematic. That's just the reality. Everyone has family that um, sometimes don't always act the way that they should. And so I am willing to put up with that in order to um, to, to actually play the mission and try to um, uh, bring information to my community, information that's taking me a really long time to, to gather and to learn. And so um, that is very important to me. Folks, I want you to understand that as we look at this argument, there are going to be people that make some really, really poor arguments against it. For example, you only showed two New Testament scholars, so how can you say it's Christianity? That is one of the worst arguments that I could possibly hear, and I hope that you heard that too. Um, I hope that you heard that too. Um, they're going to make some poor arguments, and they're going to put videos up, and they're going to celebrate each other, and they're going to you know, lick each other's wounds and all of that stuff, but the reality is that this information, this information is powerful when you hear it. When you hear it. I didn't make up the information. I'm reading sources. I'm reading sources. I'm reading original text. That's what I'm doing. Um, and I, I ask that you do that as well so that you can come up with your own understanding of what these things, um, uh, what these things mean. Um, because as you come to a better understanding, you will hopefully understand exactly how we got to where we are right now. Understanding how we got here is the best way for us to understand where we need to go next. That's the real important way for us to understand how we should move forward and, and operate as a community that is still on the rise, that is still on the rise. So family, I want to say I, I am pleased that I was able to defend the ancestor scholars. I know that those videos, some of you weren't able to hear it very clearly. I apologize for that. But I'm, I'm glad that I was able to um, defend the ancestor scholars. I'm pleased that I was able to show all of this information. Um, and I truly hope that what we will do is we will come to a better understanding of how Africans gave civilization, mathematics, architecture, engineering, literature, and yes, spirituality to the world. With that, let me say, oh, and let me also say, folks, um, I didn't announce my class. I usually do a class on the African origins of Christianity in the end of December. Obviously, I did not do it because I was focused on putting things together for the debate. Um, I am going to be offering that class probably in late January. Please look out for it. So you'll be able to see all the sources yourself. You're going to see sources that I didn't show you in the debate just because um, it's a lot of information, right? It's a lot of information. If you can only see how many books are in this room that I have to actually draw from in order to make these arguments. You might have even seen that when um, Reggie made his comment about Ost, I put this book up on the screen. That's where what he's claiming comes from. That's where it comes from. Um, he's talking about one translation of the of the pyramid text. Reggie ought to know that. Reggie ought Reggie, that's the jab. That is one translation of the text that is very <clears throat> highly questionable. And many scholars say, hey, how did he put that in there? That's not, we don't see that in the in the actual glyphs. I looked at the wait a minute. You mean the guy that's not the expert? on the language, looked at the language, and the guy that is supposed to be the expert on the language is just reading one version in English? Folks, the scholarship needs to come up to the level of, of, of um, edification that our people need. So I want to say dua to you all. The divine force in me greets the divine force in you. Go forth in divine balance and have an excellent, excellent evening. That's right. Me and Jabari wish everybody out there a happy, safe new year. If you're celebrating you're with your family, happy, safe New Year to everybody. Thank y'all. Peace and Black Power. We out, Jabari. Peace, Thank man. you, Brother Jabari, for showing up. Yeah. Peace, brother. Peace, brother.